virus. The pandemic is affecting every single country in the world. It has brought heartache and heartbreak, pain and suffering to millions of people. It has put enormous strain on healthcare and welfare systems across the globe. It has shut down public life in many parts of the world, keeping us away from our families, our friends, and the things we love. It has badly hit our economies, putting jobs, livelihoods, and businesses at risk. But it has also brought the best out of humanity. Our modern day heroes are now our healthcare workers. Small acts of solidarity, love, and kindness are spreading around the world. And this virus has reminded us that we have to protect each other if we want to protect ourselves. The reality is that we will have to learn to live with the virus until and unless we develop a vaccine. And this is why we have to join forces and pool our money and our minds to kickstart work on vaccines, diagnostics and treatments against coronavirus. We need to develop, produce and deploy them to every single corner of the world. And we must ensure that they are available and affordable for all. And this is why we must all chip in to finance this truly global endeavor. So our first objective is to raise an initial sum of 7.5 billion euros or $8 billion. This is the funding that is needed right now to ramp up work on vaccines, diagnostics and treatments. But more will be needed. So today is only the start of a global pledging marathon. The second objective is to bring under the same roof all global health organizations working on initiatives to fight the pandemic. Together, we offer to the world a framework for global cooperation on vaccines, diagnostics and therapeutics. I'm so grateful to all the governments that are joining us to present their pledges particularly to the G20 presidency, Saudi Arabia, for its tireless work to place this issue high on the G20's agenda and to reach out to make today's event successful. I'm also grateful to the other countries that are co-leading this effort together with the European Union. Thank you, France, Germany, Japan, Norway, Canada, Italy, Spain and the United Kingdom. I'm also delighted that experienced global health organizations and foundations join forces with us. They bring valuable expertise and strength. And now let's give them the resources they need. Let's start the pledging. And I'm delighted to get the ball rolling by announcing the European Commission's contribution. The European Commission mobilizes 1 billion euros for the coronavirus global response. And as this is a Team Europe effort, I'm pleased to introduce the European Council's President, Charles Michel. Charles, you have the floor. Thank you, Ursula. I would like to join Ursula in thanking you warmly for your participation today. Only a shared spirit of global solidarity and responsibility will defeat the COVID-19 crisis. This common spirit is our best defense against a virus that has devastated lives and communities in every corner of the globe. People are fighting the virus on every continent. Different countries have responded with different measures, but we all have one thing in common. Only the development, production, and the deployment of vaccines and treatments will relegate the virus to the archives of history. Without this, we can demand the hardest sacrifices from our citizens or design the most ambitious recovery plans. The threat will always be there. 
these vaccines, treatments and therapies will be crucial for Europe, but even more critical for our most vulnerable partners with fragile health systems such as Africa. They must be at the heart of our solidarity. The picture is not all bleak. Across history, human beings have displayed a surprising capacity to innovate and bounce back from disaster. Over the next months, great minds in laboratories across the world will join forces to defeat the virus. They are doing so as we speak. But victory will take more than great minds. It will take focus. It will take strong international cooperation on vaccines every step of the way. It will also take a firm commitment to multilateral institutions. And it will take resources, 7.5 billion euros, just to kickstart our efforts. It may seem like a lot, but the cost of inaction would be far greater both in lives and resources. The scope of our response must match the scope of the crisis. Today, we have a clear goal to accelerate the development, manufacture and delivery of vaccines, tests and treatments to everyone, everywhere, at an affordable price. These are dark days, but they are also days that reveal our humanity. We are confident humanity will step up and shine. This pledging summit is a confident step in that direction. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Um, today, indeed, I hope that we are really demonstrating the power of global community. And who could better represent the international community than the United Nations? I have the pleasure to welcome the Secretary General of the United Nations joining us from New York, Antonio Guterres. Antonio, thank you for being with us. You have the floor. Thank you, Ursula. It's an enormous pleasure to be here. And I thank the European Commission and its partner governments for their leadership in hosting this important pledging conference. This is exactly the kind of leadership the world needs today. In the span of a few short months, COVID-19 has spread to every corner of the world, infecting more than 3.3 million people and claiming more than 230,000 lives. Comprehensive, coordinated public health measures are critical to slow transmission and to save lives. But even countries that have taken such steps remain in jeopardy. And the virus is still likely to strike many countries that are least able to cope. In an interconnected world, none of us is safe until all of us are safe. I was very happy to join the World Health Organization and an initial group of health actors to launch the ACT Accelerator, a landmark global cooperation to speed up the development, production, and equitable access to the new COVID-19 diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. These new tools can help us to fully control the pandemic and must be treated as global public goods available and affordable for all. This is the only path to a world free of COVID-19. But this will require the most massive public health effort in history. Today, we are taking the next step, mobilizing resources for this vital endeavor. And I welcome the generous contributions being announced today towards the initial goal of 7.5 billion euros. These funds are a kind of a down payment for development, the new tools at the speed needed. But to reach everyone everywhere, we likely need five times that amount. And I call on all partners to join in this effort as we look together again on late May to sustain our momentum. We have a common vision. Let us now put people first everywhere. And I thank you once again for your leadership. Thank you, Antonio. Obrigada. And now we turn to someone who has dedicated his whole career to global health initiatives. For the World Health Organization, Director General Dr. Tedros. Dr. Tedros, it is good to have you with us on this quest. Please take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends. 
Ten days ago, President von der Leyen, President Macron, Melinda Gates, and I launched the SCT Accelerator, a call to action to work together in an unprecedented way to tackle this un unprecedented crisis. I thank President van der Leyen for her leadership in hosting this event and for this incredible demonstration of global solidarity. The world is facing an unprecedented public health crisis, but we're better positioned than any humans in history to confront it. Within two weeks of the first cases being reported to WHO, the world knew the generic sequence, the genetic sequence of the virus. The first diagnostics followed within days. We already have early results from some trials of therapeutics, and several vaccines are now in human trials. The ACT Accelerator represents a unique commitment to work together at record speed to develop essential tools to prevent, detect, and treat COVID-19. But the ultimate measure of success will not be how fast we can develop tools. It will be how equally we can distribute them. None of us can accept a world in which some people are protected while others remain exposed. This is an opportunity not only to defeat a common enemy, but to forge a common future. A future in which all people enjoy the right to the highest attainable standard of health and the products that deliver that right, health for all. I end my intervention by thanking the EU Commission, a billion down, and look forward also others to contribute and reach the 8 billion US dollars today. Thank you, Ursula, again. Thank you for bringing us all together. Vielen Dank. Thank you, Dr. Tedros. And uh, now I welcome our co-leads in protocol order. The co-leads who have been working very closely with us to get this initiative off the ground and to reach out to partners. And I'm delighted to start with France. France has been the strongest voice in the call for action for vaccine 10 days ago with the World Health Organization. For France, President Emmanuel Macron, Emmanuel, tu as la parole. Merci beaucoup, chère Ursula. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Présidente de la Commission européenne, Monsieur le Président du Conseil, Monsieur le Secrétaire général des Nations unies, chers collègues, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Monsieur le Directeur général de l'OMS, cher Tedros, Mesdames et Messieurs. Le 26 mars dernier, les leaders du G20 se sont engagés pour que la réponse internationale à la pandémie du Covid-19 soit à la fois massive, coordonnée et solidaire, ce qu'elle doit être, et vous l'avez parfaitement rappelé à l'instant. Le 24 avril, avec l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, avec tous les acteurs de la santé mondiale réunis pour la première fois en un temps record autour de principes communs, qu'il s'agisse de fonds verticaux, d'États, de fondations privées, nous avons lancé l'initiative Act A pour d'une part accélérer la conception et la production des moyens de diagnostic, de traitement et de vaccins. Deuxièmement, pour garantir un accès sûr, équitable et universel à ces moyens vitaux de lutte contre la pandémie. Et troisièmement, pour consolider les systèmes de santé, pour lutter contre le Covid-19 dans les pays les plus fragiles et poursuivre le combat contre les autres maladies. Je pense en particulier à tous nos partenaires africains. Et ce troisième pilier est essentiel car renforcer les besoins en santé primaire est indispensable si nous voulons aussi gagner contre le Covid-19. Cette initiative est historique, nécessaire, structurante et je pense que la conférence de financement aujourd'hui organisée par l'Union européenne est extrêmement importante et je vous en remercie Madame la Présidente. Nous tirons ce faisant toutes les leçons des expériences passées sur les grandes pandémies et leur gestion, de ce qui a fonctionné comme de ce qui n'a pas fonctionné. Face au Covid-19, le chacun pour soi serait une erreur majeure et il est légitime 
Comme nous l'avons tous fait, que les États veillent à protéger, évidemment, leur population, apportent leur propre réponse. Mais nous ne pourrons en sortir définitivement qu'ensemble. Par la coopération, c'est ce que l'initiative ACTA a conduit à faire, par la coopération au sein de l'Union européenne, par la coopération dans cette action, par la coopération des États, des organisations verticales, des fondations, mais aussi des acteurs privés du monde, euh, justement, de la pharma. En accélérant notamment sur la recherche de traitements et de vaccins, même si nous savons que cela prendra du temps. Et c'est pour cela qu'au cœur de cette initiative, il y a la décision aussi que nous devons collectivement porter, que ce vaccin, le jour où il sera mis au point, sera un bien public mondial. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'appartiendra à personne, mais nous appartiendra à tous. Ceux qui l'inventeront, évidemment, auront leur juste rémunération, mais l'accès sera donné à l'ensemble de la planète par l'organisation que nous aurons choisie, les bons financements, la bonne organisation publique et privée que nous mettrons derrière. Cette initiative implique des financements et nous sommes là aujourd'hui pour que chacun y prenne sa part. Je veux vous remercier, Madame la Présidente de la Commission, de ce rôle qui témoigne aussi de la volonté de l'Europe d'être au cœur de cette réponse internationale. Une course contre la montre est engagée. Il nous faut encore accélérer pour épargner des vies, sortir des incertitudes de la crise et engager l'immense travail de reconstruction sociale, économique qui sera nécessaire. Notre réunion aujourd'hui est nécessaire à cet égard pour nous donner les moyens d'agir à la bonne échelle. La France y prendra toute sa part comme elle l'a fait depuis le début de la crise que nous traversons. Parce que d'abord, nous avons besoin de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé pour faire face à l'urgence et pour consolider son rôle essentiel d'alerte, de détection, de coordination. Nous allons renforcer substantiellement le soutien que nous lui apportons pour les deux années à venir. Parce que nous avons besoin d'accélérer sur la recherche et le développement d'un vaccin qui devra être accessible à tous. Parce que nous avons un travail essentiel à conduire sur l'accès équitable à des diagnostics et traitements efficaces, notamment sur le plan des brevets. Parce qu'enfin, rien ne sera possible sur les diagnostics, les traitements et les vaccins si nous ne soutenons pas les systèmes de santé. Pour cela, la France engagera 500 millions d'euros supplémentaires dans le cadre de l'initiative Acte A. Cette somme s'ajoutera en parfaite cohérence au financement engagé par ailleurs dans le cadre de l'initiative Covid-19 Santé en commun, pour laquelle nous mobilisons au travers de l'Agence française de développement 1,2 milliard d'euros pour le renforcement des réseaux régionaux de surveillance épidémiologique, la mise en place de plans nationaux de réponse, l'appui aux ONG, aux organisations de recherche pour répondre à l'urgence et renforcer durablement les systèmes de santé de nos partenaires africains. Vous l'avez dit, Madame la Présidente de la Commission européenne, la route sera longue. Une fois le vaccin découvert, une fois les traitements éprouvés, il faudra les produire en masse et les distribuer à tous. C'est pourquoi j'appelle chacun à contribuer à cet appel aux dons que nous lançons et vous pourrez demain comme aujourd'hui compter sur mon engagement. Je vous en remercie. Merci beaucoup, merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Emmanuel, pour tout ce soutien à cette noble cause. And now we go from Paris to Berlin. Germany has been from the very beginning one of the strongest supporters of this initiative. And I'm delighted to welcome the Chancellor, Angela Merkel. Angela, schön, dass du bei uns bist. Du hast das Wort. Ja, sehr geehrte Frau Präsidentin, liebe Ursula, liebe Kollegen und Freunde, ich bin sehr froh, heute für Deutschland mit bei dieser Konferenz dabei zu sein, denn sie zeigt ein Signal der Hoffnung in so schwierigen Stunden für viele Länder und sagt uns, dass diese Pandemie eine globale Herausforderung ist und dass wir sie deshalb auch nur global besiegen können. Und alle, die heute mitwirken, verpflichten sich diesem Ziel gemeinsam an einem Impfstoff zu arbeiten, Medikamente bereitzustellen und diagnostische Mittel. Und äh, Deutschland ist sehr gerne und aus Überzeugung dabei. Die G20 haben diese 
Verpflichtung abgegeben, sich zu engagieren. Sie verkörpern immerhin 80 Prozent des Bruttoinlandsprodukts der Welt. Und ich bin der Kommissionspräsidentin Ursula von der Leyen sehr, sehr dankbar, dass sie die Initiative ergriffen hat und alle Akteure, ob aus dem politischen, dem privaten, dem Stiftungsbereich, zusammenzunehmen. Ich bedanke mich bei der WHO und bei den Vereinten Nationen, dass sie diese Veranstaltung so unterstützen und dass wir jetzt bereit sind, auch neue Wege zu gehen. Wir müssen flächendeckende Tests für möglichst viele Menschen auf der Welt bereitstellen. Wir brauchen Partnerschaften, insbesondere mit unseren afrikanischen Freunden, aber auch mit vielen anderen Ländern. Wir müssen neue Wege gehen, wenn es darum geht, einerseits den Impfstoff zu entwickeln, ihn aber gleichzeitig auch schon die Produktion von diesem Impfstoff vorzubereiten. Und wir tun dies alles aus einem gemeinsamen Ziel, möglichst vielen Menschen Gesundheit zu ermöglichen angesichts einer solchen Pandemie. Deutschland fühlt sich diesem Ziel verpflichtet. Wir werden uns mit 525 Millionen direkt an dieser Pledging-Konferenz beteiligen. Und wir werden unsere Verpflichtungen für die globale Gesundheit insgesamt mit etwa 1,3 Milliarden Euro auch weiterführen. Sei es, wenn es um Gavi geht, um den Ausbau eines Gesundheitssystems, das stärker ist, vor allen Dingen in vielen Ländern der des Südens und äh, wir werden auch unsere humanitäre Hilfe erhöhen, denn wir wissen, dass diese Pandemie dramatische Auswirkungen hat. Zum Beispiel, wenn wir einfach nur schauen, dass in Afrika jetzt die Malaya-Erkrankungen zunehmen. Also die Schäden, die durch diese Pandemie ausgelöst werden, sind viel vielfältiger als nur diese Pandemie selbst. Ich finde dies in einer Zeit, in der wir nicht immer multilateral so zusammenarbeiten, wie ich mir das wünsche, ein ganz wichtiges Signal heute. Es ist eine Stunde der Hoffnung. Ich danke allen, die dabei sind. Deutschland wird sich tatkräftig einbringen, alles verfolgen. Und wir wissen, dass dies nicht die letzte Konferenz war und dass noch mehr Anstrengungen nötig sein werden. Herzlichen Dank. Vielen Dank, Frau Bundeskanzlerin. Vielen Dank, Angela. Das ist beeindruckend. Das gibt uns Schwung. Und wie du es gesagt hast, das gibt uns Hoffnung. And now from Germany we go to Tokyo. Um, I'm happy to introduce a message from the Prime Minister of Japan, Abe Shinzo. On the Lion, Oshu Incho. Dorio no Mesama, Sekaiwa, Shingata, Coronavirus Tono, Taraka no Matanaka Nyari. Honkai go no Kaisaiwa, Tahenji Ueta Mondes. Nippon to stay. フォンデアライエンインチョウのイニシアティブを強く支持します。コロナウイルスとの戦いには国際協調が不可欠であり、我々が優先的に取り組むべきは治療薬、ワクチンの開発、それらへの公平なアクセス、そして途上国支援です。
実施しましたさらに先週14億ドルを超える追加的支援を徹底しましたこれにより世界の途上国において保険医療分野の能力向上物資支援等を強化しますその際すでに約5億ドルを拠出しているグローバルファンドやその他のパートナーとも緊密に連携していきますこれらの人道保険分野の支援に加え今回の危機が与える甚大な経済的打撃に鑑みアジア・多様州をはじめ各地の途上国における経済活動の維持・活性化に貢献するため2年間で約45億ドルの緊急財政借款を新たに設けることとしました感染症に国境はありません国際社会が一致団結してこの危機を乗り起動ではありませんか私は延期された2020年東京オリンピック・パラリンピック競技大会を人類がこの未曾有の危機に打ち勝った証として来年の夏に完全な形で開催する決意ですありがとうございましたありがとうございます From East Asia we go to Northern Europe the land of the many fjords and the midnight sun from Norway Prime Minister Erna Solberg is with us Anna, I am so happy that you can join us. Please take the floor. Thank you, Ursula, and、uh, good afternoon, everyone. This conference is an expression of、uh, one key fact that global health crisis can only be pushed back through solidarity and through partnerships between governments, strong multilateral organizations, civil society, and the private sector. As long as the virus is active somewhere, we are at risk everywhere to protect ourselves. We must, in fact, protect each other. So, today marks a turning point in how we can combat the pandemic. This is the beginning of a global movement barely seen before. Through the partnerships launched today, we will intensify the search for a vaccine. We will strengthen the search for effective treatments and increase our diagnostics cap capacities. And we will make sure that、uh, the achievements are fairly distributed and universally available. These partnerships must also be with us when we recover. We should be guided by the Sustainable Development Goals, including the commitment to leave no one behind. Norway supports the leadership of the World Health Organization. Without、uh, the World Health Organization, an effective and coordinated response to the pandemic will not be possible. Multilateral cooperation is more important than ever. So, we pledge an additional, an additional 50 million kronos to the World Health Organization. Furthermore, we commit to support global COVID 19 efforts directed to the poorest and the most vulnerable. We will develop a detail on our response in the coming weeks and months. Norway funds the development of a vaccine to CEPI and will increase our support with 220 million US dollars. And we'll do so together with other committed states and actors. But as we all know, developing the tools only gets us halfway. In order to save lives, vaccines, treatment, and diagnostic tools must be made available to all. Gavi plays an vital role in making vaccines, including a COVID 19 vaccine, when ready, available to poor countries and to vulnerable groups. So, Norway pledges US$1 billion US dollars to Gavi for the next strategic period, including US$400 million US dollars to the International Finance Facility for Immunization. As a co leader of today's event, I will work to mobilize resources and political commitment. For Fair access and distribution of vaccines. So, together, I think we will reach our goals of a safer and more sustainable future for all. Thank you. Mange tak, Erna. And I hope to see you soon again. And、uh, we stay in the north of the globe, but we go all across the Atlantic to Canada. 
Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has always been a strong supporter of this initiative from the very start. And Justin, it is so good to have you with us. We're eager to listen to you and your message. Merci Ursula, merci pour ton leadership sur cette initiative. C'est extrêmement important qu'on se rassemble et cette accélération des outils va être extrêmement utile pour nous tous. It is a, a real pleasure to be part of this today. I think it's extremely important uh, the way the world has come together with uh, an understanding that a global crisis requires a global response. Uh, we know that uh, the safety of our own citizens depends on how we keep people around the world safe. Uh, it has always been thus, but it has been uh, more poignant and more noticeable uh, during this global crisis. When a storm comes, uh, people tend to want to hunker down with their friends, with their families, and wait till it blows over. But we cannot isolate ourselves. We cannot uh, hope that everyone else does well while we take care of ourselves. We need to take care of ourselves and take care of the rest of the world as well. Take care of ourselves by taking care of the rest of the world. This is truly a moment for global leadership uh, and everything that people are doing coming together to demonstrate that is essential. Obviously, we know we can't get back to full normal uh, until we develop vaccines, and that's, what, that's why uh, Canada and so many countries around the world uh, and scientists and researchers are pushing hard to develop uh, a vaccine for COVID-19. And we're happy to support in those initiatives here at home and around the world. But it's going to take more than just finding a vaccine. It's going to need uh, production of the, that vaccine so we can reach billions of people around the world uh, in an equitable fashion. We can't just have uh, the wealthiest countries, the most uh, successful scientific countries uh, have this success uh, and not share it with the world because we will not be safe until we're able to share it with the world. That is why this uh, acceleration for tools of COVID uh, on uh, vaccine development, on treatment, on testing is such an important initiative and why I'm so happy uh, that we are all a part of this. Canada is proud to be a part of this. Our contribution of more than $850 million includes significant investments in Canadian medical research and development. It also includes contributions to international vaccine development through the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness in Innovations, uh, funding for the WHO's work on treatment, and of course, support for developing countries. We cannot do this without thinking about the world at the same time. Canada, as always, stands ready to do its part, and we're very much uh, looking forward to seeing everyone join in. On doit travailler ensemble pour assurer une distribution abordable et équitable des vaccins, des tests et des traitements. Le Canada fait sa part. On investit plus que 850 millions de dollars pour notamment appuyer la recherche et le développement dans le domaine médical au Canada. On accorde aussi du financement pour permettre à des groupes comme la Coalition pour les innovations en préparation aux épidémies d'élaborer un vaccin pour soutenir les travaux de l'OMS sur les traitements et pour aider les pays en développement à s'adapter. Nous devons être solidaires les uns des autres. C'est comme ça qu'on va passer à travers. Et je sais, on va passer à travers ensemble. Thank you very much. Et merci beaucoup, Justin. Merci beaucoup au Canada. And uh, now we are heading back to the south of Europe, to Madrid, where I'm delighted to be joined by the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, a true European friend. Pedro, thank you so much for being with us, and we are eager to hear from you now. You have the floor. Ursula, por tus palabras. Buenas tardes, estimados colegas desde desde España. Quisiera comenzar rindiendo, como siempre hago cuando comparezco públicamente, rindiendo un homenaje a los más afectados por la enfermedad COVID-19, a los que han fallecido, a los familiares, a sus seres queridos. También al personal sanitario que cada día está en primera línea de defensa del conjunto de la ciudadanía y a cuantas personas mantienen activos los servicios esenciales en los momentos de mayor riesgo. A todos ellos y a todas ellas les debemos una respuesta decidida a nivel global, que es lo que estamos haciendo gracias al liderazgo de la presidenta de la Comisión Europea.
El único camino posible para vencer a la pandemia será el del acceso rápido y asequible a las vacunas, los tratamientos y los diagnósticos en todo el mundo. Y la buena noticia es que tenemos un plan para poder lograrlo. España, como no puede ser de otra manera, se suma a esta excelente iniciativa con espíritu de solidaridad y de cooperación, impulsando el liderazgo de la Organización Mundial de la Salud tan importante en estos momentos decisivos para la humanidad. En este sentido, me complace anunciar que el Gobierno de España contribuirá a estos esfuerzos con 125 millones de euros. En concreto, vamos a movilizar 50 millones de euros para Gavi, la Alianza de Vacunas, y 75 millones de euros para CEPI, la Coalición para las Innovaciones en Preparación para las Epidemias. Ello añade también nuestro compromiso de otros 100 millones de euros ya anunciados para el Fondo Global, anunciado en septiembre, así como los 140 millones de euros ya aportados a Gavi. Hoy, nos hemos reunido por videoconferencia para propiciar una respuesta ambiciosa y global al coronavirus, respuesta que descansa sobre tres principios fundamentales, a mi parecer. El primero de ellos, la justicia social, la necesaria justicia social. El segundo, la ciencia. Y, en tercer lugar, la necesaria colaboración de todos los países, del conjunto de la humanidad. Garantizar el acceso equitativo y asequible a las vacunas y tratamientos no es solo el único camino para derrotar al virus, significa también hacerlo correcto. Debemos hacerlo correcto. Debemos llevar a cabo todas las acciones necesarias para impedir que aumente la desigualdad como consecuencia de esta pandemia. Debemos recuperar las lecciones aprendidas durante nuestro pasado más reciente y asegurarnos de que esta vez sí salimos de la crisis sin dejar a nadie atrás. Tenemos que avanzar en los esfuerzos de investigación científica que están ahora mismo puestos en marcha, desde sus fases iniciales de desarrollo hasta el incremento de la producción y las garantías de su distribución. Más allá de realizar contribuciones financieras, espero que seamos todos capaces de crear estructuras de colaboración duraderas que puedan mejorar nuestra respuesta ante otras enfermedades presentes y futuras a escala global. El COVID-19 ha puesto a los gobiernos del conjunto del planeta frente al espejo y nos ha recordado algo muy importante, y es eh, que el ser humano no es invencible, sino más bien es vulnerable. Estamos ante una amenaza que no entiende de fronteras y que más eh, daño nos hará cuanto menos unidos estemos. Por eso, ahora más que nunca, debemos estar unidos porque unidos somos sin duda alguna mucho más fuertes frente al virus. Así que pueden contar con España para estar en primera línea de este proyecto, una iniciativa que es tan noble como también imprescindible y que estoy seguro de que tendrá éxito. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Pedro. And uh, now we are joined by someone who has been through every possible emotion in the last month. From the United Kingdom, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. As you can see from his video, he's feeling much better, and I congratulate him on his recent arrival. I'm delighted that the UK is co-hosting this summit and joining forces with all of you against our common enemy, the coronavirus. In our own countries, we've taken extraordinary measures, asking our people to accept sweeping restrictions on their way of life And by doing so, we formed a human shield around our health systems, enabling our heroic health workers to save many lives, including my own. But the truth is that none of us can succeed alone. To win this battle, we must work together to build an impregnable shield around all our people. And that can only be achieved by developing and mass producing a vaccine. The more we pull together, and share our expertise, the faster our scientists will succeed. The UK is the biggest donor to the efforts of the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations to find a vaccine. We've committed up to £744 million to the global response to coronavirus, including our pledge of £388 million for the vital research and development of vaccines, treatments and tests. And that is the focus of today's conference. And through Gavi, the Global Vaccine Alliance, we're also helping the world's poorest countries cope with the virus. I look forward to welcoming many of you to Gavi's Global Vaccine Summit, which the UK is hosting on 4th of June. When we do find a vaccine, it's vital that we are able to distribute it to everyone who needs it. Countries and pharmaceutical companies will need to work together with an approach that defies the usual ways of operating. 
will need innovative partnerships, like the one between AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford, and will need a truly global effort. Because no one country and no one pharmaceutical company will be able to do this alone. The race to discover the vaccine to defeat this virus is not a competition between countries, but the most urgent shared endeavour of our lifetimes. It's humanity against the virus. We're in this together, and together we will prevail. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to the United Kingdom for this encouraging message and their generosity. And now we turn to the G20 presidency, Saudi Arabia. I have a message from the Minister of Health, Dr. Taufik Ibn Fazan Al Rabia. I would like to extend our appreciation to the European Commission colleagues and international organizations for coming together and engaging in this high level pledging marathon. On behalf of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, G20 Presidency, it gives me a great honor to partake in such a tremendous and impactful event. We have suffered grave losses due to this pandemic, but it has also demonstrated our humanity. And today is a proof that through our solidarity and commitment, we can fight this pandemic together. In a summit on the 26th of March, G20 leaders have committed to closing this health financing gap and invited all countries, NGOs, and philanthropic organizations to join these efforts. The Global Preparedness Monitoring Board estimated an initial $8 billion to make up for the immediate global health funding shortfalls. As such, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has pledged $500 million and is urging all members and organizations to commit to empowering global solidarity in bridging direct funding gaps. In this event, we must keep in mind the importance of safeguarding everyone's health globally as we face this crisis with catastrophic effects on people's lives and well-being. This pledge is urgently needed to ensure development and deployment of diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccine globally. The WHO, CIPI, Gavi, FIND, Therapeutics Accelerator, and other renowned organizations will be enabled to provide the support needed to all countries to put this pandemic behind us. In closing, overcoming this crisis requires an urgent and exceptional global response our primary responsibility is to ensure that our people are protected from disease and to make all efforts necessary to eliminate it. Thank you. Shukran, shukran, Saudi Arabia. And uh, as you have seen from the first round of speakers, this is a truly global effort we're launching today in the face of the pandemic. We do this pledging to make sure that a future vaccine is accessible to all. We've made a fantastic start, and I'm happy to have now with us two special guests who speak on behalf of regions that need our support. For Jordan and the region, His Majesty King Abdullah, Your Majesty, it is an honor to have you with us. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Madam President, Your Excellencies, uh, dear friends, it is a privilege to be part of this global effort to respond to COVID-19. And we truly appreciate the EU's leading role in promoting global solidarity to counter this pandemic. The past months dealing with COVID-19 have shown us that we all need each other to survive. The lessons we learn must help us seek a better integration of our world, a re-globalization that sees relations based on building capacities, ushering cooperation, and putting the well-being of all peoples first. Only through, only through this integration can we bring about a positive interdependence, tapping into skills and resources across national boundaries. And this will enable us to expedite the process of finding solutions and addressing shortages in each country in medical equipment 
and supplies. Ultimately, we will be better able to live up to our responsibility as an international community to ensure every individual across countries and continents has equal and equitable access to a vaccine once available. In my region, failure is not an option. With ongoing crises, conflict, and unemployment, the risks are way too high. And we cannot forget that those that are most vulnerable in such difficult times are people such as refugees and displaced communities. In Jordan, protecting refugees from COVID-19 is a priority. And while the lockdown has exasperated our economic difficulties, our quick action has thankfully helped suppress the spread of the virus. And this has meant that we have been ready to provide support where possible, offering PPEs to neighbors and friends experiencing shortages. But at the same time, we do rely on our friends for support to address our own shortages, such as ventilators and testing kits. Our challenges of success increase exponentially if we partner to build capacities within each of our countries, and more importantly, cooperate rather than compete. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Your Majesty. My dear friend, thank you for your touching words. And uh, now we're moving from Amman to Pretoria. South Africa is fighting hard to contain the virus, and COVID-19, unfortunately, has arrived in almost every country of the African continent. From my last visit to Addis and the African Union, I know how crucial your leadership will be to overcome this crisis. And I'm delighted now to give the floor to the President of, the South, of South Africa and Chairperson of the African Union, Cyril Ramaphosa. Please, Cyril, it is your turn. A pleasure, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, to have this opportunity. On behalf of the Europe, uh, African Union, I convey my appreciation to the EU and indeed to Global Preparedness Monitoring Board for convening this fledging conference in response to COVID-19. This is a health emergency of truly global proportions, and I think everyone agrees to that. Yet developing countries are particularly vulnerable to its impact. We require coordinated as well as consistent international action so that all countries are sufficiently capacitated to be able to deal with this pandemic. We call on all countries to make tangible commitments to bolster the global effort, but in particular to support countries that currently are bearing the brunt of poverty, of weak health systems, and Africa itself has responded to this pandemic with urgency and purpose. The African Union has established a COVID response fund to direct resources towards the continent's response and to date, Africa itself has been able to raise $61 million from member states, the money that will be committed to helping to fight the pandemic. And as a continent, African countries are supporting each other through regional coronavirus task forces to oversee screening, testing, detection, and diagnosis. Now, South Africa is also making significant investments in science and innovation to fight COVID-19 pandemic. We pledge the capacities and facilities of South Africa's institutes to support the global effort. And in addition to the investments that we've made to these and other research initiatives, South Africa is committing an amount of $1.3 million or 1.2 million euros 
to this historic pledging conference. We believe that this is a major effort, and uh, with the meager resources that we have, we are prepared to also join in. Now more than ever, the world needs solidarity and more solidarity. The world also needs cooperation to mobilize and guide investments and to drive delivery towards equitable access to new COVID diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines. And I strongly believe that working together, we shall overcome this pandemic. And Ashila, thank you very much for affording us this opportunity. And may it all go well. Thank you very much for your initiative. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Cyril, uh, for joining us today in this endeavor. And indeed, what we live here today is the world rallying behind the same cause. And many more countries wish to contribute. So let's hear from them in protocol order again. For Monaco, I have now the pleasure to introduce a message from His Serene Highness Prince Albert. Madame la Présidente, Mesdames et Messieurs les chefs d'État et de gouvernement, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, mes pensées vont d'abord vers les personnes qui ont été emportées par le Covid-19 et vers leurs familles plongées dans la tristesse. Elles vont aussi vers celles qui se battent encore contre ce fléau qui les frappe. Je tiens par ailleurs à remercier chaleureusement les nombreuses personnes qui, chaque jour, s'investissent dans la lutte contre ce virus. Leur action est déterminante. Depuis quelques semaines, nos vies ont radicalement changé et les bouleversements successifs à cette pandémie vont inéluctablement se poursuivre. Il nous appartient de faire en sorte que les difficultés, les désagréments et même les souffrances actuelles nous conduisent à tracer de nouvelles perspectives. À travers les changements sociaux et économiques considérables qu'elle entraîne, cette crise doit nous inciter à plus de solidarité. C'est un impératif moral, c'est un intérêt collectif. Une solution mondiale durable à la pandémie dépend largement du développement et du déploiement rapide de diagnostics, vaccins et traitements efficaces. Sans eux, tous les pays du monde restent vulnérables. Il est donc vital de garantir à tous un accès équitable aux technologies médicales essentielles dans la lutte contre le virus. Pour réussir, seule une riposte coordonnée et solidaire sera couronnée de succès. Cela implique inévitablement une mobilisation des ressources financières à l'échelle mondiale pour que nous puissions rapidement mettre au point et déployer des outils de diagnostic, des traitements et un vaccin efficace, accessible à toutes les populations. Répondant à l'appel d'une coalition mondiale inédite de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, je salue l'initiative de l'Union européenne qui a souhaité unir ses forces à celles des acteurs internationaux issus des secteurs publics, privés et de la société civile pour organiser cette conférence des donateurs. Notre responsabilité est d'agir maintenant, collectivement et efficacement. Mon pays a toujours tenu sa place dans le concert des nations, dans les domaines humanitaires où se manifeste la solidarité internationale. Plus que jamais, je souhaite joindre ma voix à celle de la communauté internationale. C'est la raison pour laquelle la Principauté de Monaco, solidaire, s'engage aujourd'hui à contribuer à cet effort commun. Je suis convaincu que ce n'est qu'ensemble et unis que nous arriverons à vaincre cette épreuve qui, dans notre histoire récente, n'a pas d'équivalent. Ensemble et unis, nous aurons également l'opportunité d'orienter l'avenir vers une voie plus durable et plus inclusive. Je sais pouvoir compter sur la mobilisation de tous. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, Altesse. Merci beaucoup à Monaco. Et uh, now we cross the Mediterranean and go to Turkey. And we have a message from President Erdogan. Saygıdeğer liderler, etkinliğimizin öncülüğünü ve moderatörlüğünü yapan kıymetli dostum Sayın von der Leyen, salgınla mücadelede küresel sorumluluk hissiyatını taşıyan kıymetli paydaşlar, sizleri şahsım ve milletim adına en kalbi duygularımla selamlıyorum. Kabine toplantımızı icra ettiğimiz şu saatlerde maalesef aranızda bulunamıyorum. Ancak konuya verdiğim ehemmiyet çerçevesinde sizlere 
bu video kaydı aracılığıyla seslenme fırsatını yakalamaktan büyük bir bahtiyarlık duyuyorum. Öncelikle salgında hayatını kaybeden vatandaşlarınız için taziyelerimi sunuyor, tedavisi sürenlere acil şifalar diliyorum. Şu ana kadar şehir hastanelerine yaptığımız yatırımlar salgınla mücadelede bize çok önemli avantajlar sağlamıştır. Sağlık sistemimiz ve altyapı yatırımlarımız güçlü olmasına rağmen İstanbul'da 3 ayrı noktada 2100 yatak kapasiteli her türlü donanıma sahip yeni salgın hastanelerinin inşaatına başladık. Bu hastaneleri 3 hafta içerisinde bitirip hizmete alıyoruz. Koronavirüs salgını sadece bir sağlık krizi olmaktan çıkmış, siyasi, ekonomik ve sosyal boyutları olan benzersiz bir küresel imtihana dönüşmüştür. Bu salgın bize dillerimiz, dinlerimiz farklı olsa da kaderimizin ortak olduğunu hatırlatmıştır. Türkiye olarak bu anlayışla bugüne kadar 57 ülkeye tıbbi malzeme desteği sağladık. Maskeden solunum cihazına kadar bu süreçte ihtiyaç duyulan kritik sağlık malzemelerinin tedarikinde de güvenilir ortak olmaya devam ediyoruz. İmkanlarımızla beraber ülkemizin virüsle mücadeledeki tecrübelerini de dostlarımızla paylaşıyoruz. Virüsün ortadan kaldırılması için en etkili aracın aşı olduğu görülüyor. Milli faaliyetlerimizin yanı sıra teşhis, tedavi ve aşı geliştirilmesi yönündeki küresel çabaları da destekliyoruz. 26 Mart'ta kabul ettiğimiz G20 bildirgesinde aşının hızlıca geliştirilmesi için kaynak sağlama taahhüdünde bulunmuştuk. Bugünkü koronavirüs küresel mukabele taahhüt etkinliğinin parçası olmayı da bu nedenle görev addettik. Çalışmalarda gereksiz tekrarlara ve bürokrasiye izin verilmemesi hedefe ulaşmamızı kolaylaştıracaktır. Covid-19 aşısı tüm insanlığın ortak malı olmalıdır. Bu bakımdan üretilecek aşıya küresel erişimin garanti altına alınması ve kimsenin geride bırakılmaması prensibinin itinayla uygulanması son derece önemlidir. Aşı geliştirme çabalarına yönelik maddi katkımızı belirlerken tüm bu hususları dikkate alacağız. Değerlendirmeler akabinde tespit edeceğimiz meblağı ise 23 Mayıs'a kadar ilan edeceğiz. Kıymetli dostlarım, sözlerime son verirken etkinliğimizin maksadına ulaşarak dünyamız için hayırlara vesile olmasını temenni ediyorum. Emeği geçen tüm kurum, kuruluş ve paydaşlara şahsım, milletim adına teşekkür ediyorum. Thank you Turkey and now we move from Ankara to Roma. And uh, due to technical problems, uh, it was not possible to have Italy in the group of co-leads, but it's a very important member of our co-leads. So in Italy, I welcome my good friend, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte. Giuseppe, thank you for joining this global effort. You will carry the torch of the next G20 presidency. So please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Ursula. Dear colleagues, Dear global citizens, dear friends, faced with uh, an unprecedented global threat, the international community has only one effective option to defeat the virus, cooperation. From the very outset, Italy is a committed member of the International Alliance against the coronavirus. Last week, we launched the COVID-19 accelerator and supported the call to action to scale up efforts to ensure equitable and universal access to vaccination, treatment, and diagnostics. Italy wants to have a special role in this endeavor, not only as a country which, unfortunately, has gathered a lot of experience in the fight against the virus, and is now ready to share it, 
Italy, it's also the incoming G20 presidency in 2021. During our mandate, we are willing to promote effective multilateralism as the best political accelerator to win this battle by strengthening health systems, by providing concrete support to our citizens, and by fostering a sustainable, equitable, and long-lasting recovery. Today, I am honored to announce the following pledges on behalf of the Italian people. We will contribute 140 million euros to all the three organizations. We will contribute 10 million euros to CEPI to accelerate research to find a vaccine. We also co contribute 10 million euros to the World Health Organization to continue supporting the most vulnerable countries in the preparedness and the response to COVID-19. We will allocate half a million euros to COVID-19 response mechanism of the Global Fund. And finally, since distributing vaccines safely and effectively must be our common priority, we commit to contribute 120 million euros over the next say, five years to Gavi for the global immunization from COVID-19 and other diseases. Dear colleagues, dear friends, as a responsible international stakeholder, Italy is ready to stand by you all during this difficult journey. Together we will make it. Thank you. Grazie, Giuseppe. Grazie. And now from beautiful Rome, we go to the Swiss mountains. President Simonetta Somaruga sent us a message. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I first would like to thank the organizers of this video conference aimed at coordinating a global response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is a very timely initiative that illustrates our common resolve to overcome this disease together. I would like to make the three following points. Firstly, as one of the leading hubs for medical, pharmaceutical and health technology innovation, Switzerland welcomes the emphasis placed by this conference on equitable access to diagnostics, treatments and vaccines. We believe in the need to integrate this perspective into all projects aimed at fighting the pandemic. Let us leave no one behind. Secondly, I would like to stress that the solidarity we are now showing in the health sector will amount to nothing if we do not complement it with solidarity in addressing the social and economic consequences of the pandemic. What good will it do if we save people from the pandemic only to let them die of poverty and hunger? Lastly, I am glad to announce that Switzerland will devote more than 350 million euros towards international efforts to combat the pandemic and its consequences. Half of the amount will go to the International Committee of the Red Cross to help reduce the humanitarian impact of the pandemic. Up to 160 million euros will be devoted to further supporting international efforts to combat the COVID-19 crisis, notably towards research and development on diagnostics, treatment and vaccines, and further humanitarian needs. The Swiss government will decide on these contributions in the coming weeks. Close to 20 million euros has already been allocated to CEPI, to the WHO and other global health organizations in this field. Switzerland is looking forward to continuing international collaboration in the fight against COVID-19 under the guidance of the World Health Organization. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Switzerland. And uh, now we go to Israel. I'm happy that Israel is joining the coronavirus global response. And uh, allow me to introduce a message from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Greetings to all of you from Jerusalem. Defeating a global pandemic demands a global partnership.
That's why I want to commend EU President Ursula von der Leyen for bringing together countries from around the world to combat the coronavirus. Israel, like all countries, has been greatly affected by it. Fortunately, our casualties thus far have been relatively low. This has been the result of early action to contain the disease, advanced technology to locate those infected, first-rate medical professionals, and a disciplined population that largely adhere to the mitigation policies enacted by our government. But as we all know, the corona epidemic is far from over. At best, we're only at the end of the beginning. And like all countries, Israel is now trying to find the right balance between protecting the health of our citizens by preventing another spike in infections and enabling the reopening of our economy. But ultimately, to ensure both the public health and national prosperity, we must all work together on improving diagnostics, accelerating therapies, and ultimately developing a vaccine. I'm confident that Israel's leading research institutions, its world-renowned scientists, and our unique culture of innovation can enable us to play an important role in advancing solutions on all three fronts. And that is why Israel is pledging today $60 million to these efforts. We hope to work with other countries to leverage our unique capabilities to find solutions for the benefit of all. Thank you. Shalom, Israel. So now we go back to Europe. Um, the Netherlands were one of the first supporters of this global effort. The Prime Minister, my friend Mark Rutte, has a message for us. On behalf of the Netherlands, I would like to thank President von der Leyen and her co-host for taking the initiative to establish a global coalition to aid the global community in the fight against COVID-19. The present situation calls for unusual forms of multidisciplinary and international cooperation and for solidarity. Because we can only fight this crisis by working together and sharing our knowledge. So we are very happy with the actions the WHO and the EU have taken so far to coordinate research and innovation efforts on COVID-19. A lot of work has been done already, but unfortunately we are not there yet. The Netherlands would therefore like to announce that it will be contributing 192 million euros to global cooperative efforts to develop and implement new tools in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We are contributing 50 million euros for the rapid development of a vaccine through the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. 42 million euros for dedicated COVID-19 medical research and development programs. 50 million euros for prevention and humanitarian aid. 40 million euros for economic stability via IMF and UN mechanisms. And 10 million euros for additional support to the global financing facility to be used to aid low-income countries in fighting the, this pandemic. The Netherlands is also a long-standing partner of Gavi. We will carefully consider our future contribution and we look forward to the Gavi's third donor pledging conference hosted by the UK government on June the 4th. Thank you and stay well. Thank you well, Nederland. We are really building up fantastic momentum thanks to the generosity of all of the pledging partners. This can really help turn the tide in our favor against this virus. And now I'm happy to welcome a message from one of our partner organizations. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is an inspiring example how philanthropists can help a global cause. I'm very delighted to introduce a message from Melinda Gates. Right now, the world is counting on its scientists, the people operating electron microscopes and conducting clinical trials in hopes of developing a drug or a vaccine, because that's what it's going to take to beat this pandemic, breakthrough science. But we must remember, that's not all it will take. For life to get back to normal, we also need to call on our common humanity. 
COVID-19 has reminded us that viruses don't obey borders or customs laws. They don't care about what nationality you are. So long as COVID-19 is somewhere, COVID-19 can spread anywhere. So what will it take to end this pandemic? Well, it will take more than making a vaccine available to the very highest bidder. It's gonna take more than delivering it only to people in wealthy nations. The pandemic won't end until people everywhere can be immunized against it, until everyone can benefit from the world's science, regardless of where they live. That's what this effort is about. By combining the world's expertise and brain power and resources, we can attack this disease in the way it's attacking us globally. And by working together, we can beat it much faster than if we were working alone. Our foundation is proud to partner with you, and I'm pleased to announce today that we will pledge $100 million towards this effort. I want to thank the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, for making this event happen. And I want to thank all the leaders involved for their generosity. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda and Bill, for your leadership and thank you for your dedication. And now we go from the United States to the Grand Duchy. For Luxembourg, we have a message from Prime Minister Xavier Bettel. Dear colleagues, I miss you, but uh, even if I'm not alive there, I'm happy to join you for this pledging conference. We all know the COVID-19 pandemic is a global challenge that requires unity, cooperation and solidarity. As the pandemic still spreads across the world, causing much pain and upheaval, it is so important for us to come together to fight this common enemy. I therefore warmly welcome all the global efforts undertaken so far. And you can count on Luxembourg's support to this global response. We'll contribute 5 million euro to the Central Emergency Response Fund, 3.5 million euro to the Global Humanitarian Response Plan, as well as 2 million euro to the International Committee of the Red Cross Appeal. We'll continue to provide support to the health systems of our partner countries, in particular in Africa and the Sahel region. We'll focus on the most vulnerable, which is essential for the delivery of vaccines and treatment. In addition, my country has also provided flexible co-funding to a wide range of multilateral partners, including the WHO. Overall, our COVID-19 efforts in terms of development cooperation and humanitarian aid will amount to 17 million euro of fresh funds and 40 million euro reorientation of existing commitments. But we have to do more and my country is willing to do more. Therefore, I'm pleased to announce that both in the area of diagnostics and therapeutics, Luxembourg has been very active in the framework of several international initiatives for the evaluation of experimental treatments for the COVID-19. We are currently rolling out a large scale testing program at the level of the general population. On this, we stand ready to cooperate at an international level and share our data. On vaccines, we will contribute an additional 800,000 euros to the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. We will also substantially increase our contributions to Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, for the immunizations of millions of children in the world's poorest country. In the coming weeks, we will examine how we can make additional contributions. In conclusion, I know that. Together, through spirit of solidarity, we will manage to overcome this unprecedented challenge. Merci, Xavier. Merci, au Luxembourg. Back up north, we now head to the shores of the Baltic Sea. Sweden is joining us with a message from Prime Minister Stefan Löfven. Sweden strongly supports the Corona Global Response Initiative and today's pledging event. I would like to thank the Commission and others involved for initiating this meeting. This pandemic knows no borders, neither should our response. All resources must be mobilized, both public and private. International cooperation must be further enhanced. We need to make vaccines, treatment and diagnostics 
accessible to everyone, regardless of where you live or of your ability to pay. And let me emphasize Sweden's continued commitment to provide 1% of our GDP to development cooperation and humanitarian aid. Our large core support at 1.8 billion euros allows for flexibility and enable the United Nations system to take early action in response to the COVID-19 crisis. In addition, Sweden has provided 15.6 million euros to specific COVID-19 related measures, and that includes 3.7 million euros to the WHO crisis fund. Now, more than ever, it is important to give the WHO the best conditions possible to carry out its work. We have confidence in the WHO and appreciation for the organization's important work. As future actions, the Swedish government pledges to make available 9.2 million euros to the Swedish Research Council for investments in research and innovation relating to COVID-19. And we will provide 4.6 million euros to the UN COVID-19 multi-partner trust fund. We will also explore how guarantee instruments can be useful for purchasing, for example, by linking volumes to better prices or securing bridge funding. It could be used in the development of a vaccine. Sweden is a committed partner in the fight against COVID-19. Our response uh, to the pandemic, as well as the important work to enable a broad recovery from the crisis, needs to be equal, sustainable and based on human rights. This is a time for collaboration and solidarity. Thank you. Tack så mycket, Stefan. And now we go to the very southwest of Europe, to Portugal and Prime Minister Antonio Costa. Portugal has always undertaken tremendous efforts to fight the virus. We have a message from Prime Minister Antonio Costa. Good afternoon. A special thanks to Ursula for hosting this pledging conference and for coordinating the European Union contribution to the coronavirus global response. COVID-19 has exposed in the most dramatic way the obvious. We are one humanity living in one world. That is why we must unite and join forces globally if we want to stand a chance of overcoming this pandemic. I'm happy to announce that Portugal joins the coronavirus global response with a joint public-private pledge. And on behalf of 10 million Portuguese people, we make a pledge of 10 million euros. COVID-19 knows no borders. We are all equally vulnerable and we are all equally indispensable to fight COVID-19. Vaccines, treatments and diagnosis will be the most effective way to do it. That is why, besides today's pledge, the Portuguese research and industry communities are prepared to participate in the global response in these three areas and, all, and at all stages, research, production and distribution. Portugal is also fully committed to contribute to an effective coronavirus response for the most vulnerable, especially in Africa and in Latin America. Let's all join efforts and rephrase Louis Pasteur's words. The virus n'aura jamais le dernier mot. Thank you. Obrigada, Portugal. Obrigada. And now we are heading to Croatia, also representing the current EU presidency. I warmly welcome Prime Minister Andrei Plenković. Andrei, you have the floor. Thank you. 
Andre, it is difficult to understand you. I think we have a technical problem. So I propose I move forward to the next and we try in between to fix that technical problem. So now we move from the shores of the Adriatic Sea to the Baltic Sea and we're going to Estonia and Prime Minister Yuri Ratas, who wants to share his message with us. Dear friends, on behalf of Estonia, I would like to express my gratitude and support to Ursula's initiative for Europe to lead the way with coronavirus global response. As part of a global community, we need to act together in this truly global crisis and leave no one behind. Estonia takes over the rotating presidency of the United Nations Security Council in May. We are going to make sure that the pandemic receives the highest attention of the Security Council. We all have a common goal to leave this pandemic behind us as soon as possible. We need new diagnostics vaccines, treatments, and an equal distribution to all. We call upon everyone to donate in order to show solidarity and help those in need. Estonia has contributed the World Health Organization to support the fight against COVID-19. We stand ready to further support this joint global initiative. Thank you, Yuri. And uh, now I'm happy to introduce a life message from one of the architects of this initiative. Without you, Victor, my friend, all this would not have happened. For the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, Dr. Victor Zhao, President of the U.S. National Academy of Medicine, will speak to us. Victor, I'm pleased to give you the floor. Thank you so much. President von der Leyen, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues, and partners. I'm Victor Zhao, President of the U.S. National Academy of Medicine and a board member of GPMB, the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board. It is a great honor for me to join you on behalf of GPMB, and it's truly inspiring to see so many nations coming together to stop this dangerous pandemic. I'd like to thank the global leaders here today for their commitment in particular, President von der Leyen for a visionary leadership. Our 2019 GPMB report recommended urgent actions be undertaken to address major gaps in global preparedness. On March 9th this year, in response to the COVID-19 crisis, the GPMB called for an immediate injection of at least 8 billion US dollars or 7.5 million euros, billion euros to support WHO, as well as development of vaccine, production vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostic for COVID-19. An investment of 8 billion is small compared to costs of inaction, and every nation will benefit from this investment. Following the GPMB announcement, we approached several global leaders for their support. President von der Leyen immediately recognized the importance of this concept and offered to organize this pledging summit. The world is truly grateful to you, Ursula, and to all of you for your commitment. COVID exposes our interdependencies and the absolute necessity of working together to solve this crisis. We cannot fight this pandemic or future pandemics without international collaboration and global collective action. We cannot let the poorest and the most affected countries struggle alone. We need to work together to accelerate development of vaccines, diagnostics, and treatment, and to ensure that resources are applied effectively and equitably so that everyone can benefit from them, regardless of their ability to pay. Today's pledging event and the access to a COVID accelerator represent very important steps towards achieving our universal goal. So on behalf of GPMB and every person on this earth, 
Thank you all for your commitment to this historic cause, and thank you, Ursula, for your leadership. Thank you, Victor, and we count on your continued engagement and expertise. And now we go back to Croatia. Andrei, Andrei Plenković, Prime Minister, you have the floor. Hello, Ursula. I hope you can hear me now. Is it okay? It's very good. Way better. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And first of all, compliments to you and other co-hosts and organizers of this coronavirus global response pledging event. As the rotating presidency of the Council, uh, we have the privilege to support this initiative and also recall that the first recorded world quarantine dates back to the 1377 in the Croatian city of Dubrovnik. And it is amazing that we still, six centuries later, use the same methodology to fight the COVID-19. Based on our tradition, strong tradition of public health with Andrea Stampar as one of the founders of the WHO and the first president of the WHO Assembly, Croatian scientists have already two weeks ago isolated the new variant of the coronavirus at the Zagreb-based University Hospital for Infectious Diseases. We are also happy that in our medals Institute of Science, we are developing a therapeutic vaccination project, which will certainly aim to select molecules that handicap the coronavirus by preventing its entry into the target cells. For this particular pledging conference, more adding to the already committed 2 million euros at the national level for research for COVID projects, I would like to pledge on behalf of Croatia another 1 million euros as a contribution to this event. We look forward to the extended solidarity and joint fight to prevent this pandemic taking more lives globally and also in Europe. Thank you very much, Ursula. Thank you so much, Andre, and thank you for your ongoing support to our common cause. And indeed, we stay in Europe now and we travel to Bulgaria with a message from Prime Minister Boyko Borisov. И заболяване и тежко да се отразило върху социалния, финансовия и економическия живот, да са подложени под такова изпитание медицинските ни системи, да се дадат толкова хиляди човешки жертви. Криза от такова измерение изисква силен, координиран, широко обхватен и съгласуван глобален отговор от огромен мащаб и солидарност към нашите партньори, особено за тези държави, които имат по-слаби здравни системи или които първи бяха поразени от този непознат за човечеството вирус. Ние силно подкрепяме дейността на Организацията на Обединените нации, силно подкрепяме всички международни институции, които работят в момента и всеки ден се предкланяме пред действията на медицинските екипи, лаборантите и всички, които работят в развойната дейност за откриване на най-важното – вакцина и лекарство срещу COVID-19. В България и в мое лице приветстваме това, което в момента Европейската комисия прави. И искаме и ние да се включим в борбата срещу коронавируса с 100 000 евро за създаването и глобалното внедряване на вакцина срещу COVID-19. В заключение, за да бъда кратък, ми позволете да благодаря и на тебе лично, Урсула, и на всички колеги в комисията, всички комисари, които работихте много усърдно, на всички мои колеги и държави, които ще се включат в тази инициатива, защото всички сме наясно, че това е заболяване и такова глобално вакциниране, след като бъде намерена вакцина и създаване на лекарства, ще изисква време, но и милиарди, които да подпомогнат и да свършат работа в тази пандемия. Не на последно место, считам, че това трябва да ни накара да извадим и свои полки, 
и да запасиме, дори да презапасиме Европейския съюз с защитни облекла, маски, очила и всичко необходимо. Тестове, респиратори, апаратура допълнителна и, разбира се, обучение, квалификация и закрила на медицинските лица. Така че прекрасна инициатива, с удоволствие се включвам. Поздравявам те, Урсула, и благодаря на всички колеги. Merci Boyko and merci Bulgaria and indeed we will draw lessons from this pandemic crisis. Thank you for your contribution. And next will join us Ireland with a message from the Irish Taoiseach Leo Varadkar. Hello, Leo Varadkar here, Taoiseach Prime Minister of Ireland, speaking to you from Dublin. Excellencies, as we all know, viruses don't respect borders and don't recognize countries. And this virus, the coronavirus, is a shared enemy of all of humanity and all governments. The only way we can defeat a global threat is by working together on a multilateral basis. And Ireland and the European Union are committed to doing exactly that. Working together, we can develop an effective vaccine, effective treatments, testing systems that work, diagnostics and therapeutics. And in doing this, Ireland wants to play its part. So far, we've already contributed 60 million in direct or repurposed grants, enabling our UN and other partners to respond rapidly to the situation on the ground. And as part of that, we've quadrupled our funding to the World Health Organization to 9.5 million. Today, on behalf of the Irish people, I'm announcing a new pledge of 18 million euros to GAVI, GAVI, the Vaccine Alliance. This will be paid over the course of the next five years so that the poorest countries in the world will have access to the COVID-19 vaccine if and when it's developed. This is part of the European Union's comprehensive effort to fight COVID-19. We're also going to harness the capabilities of our research sector, our world-class universities and pharmaceutical companies, and will co-finance a public-private partnership in immunology research in this area, valued up to 10 million euros over the next three years. Sooner or later, we will defeat this virus, we will develop the vaccine that prevents it and the medicines that treat it. And it's really important that nobody in the world is left out when that happens. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks to Ireland. And uh, now we are heading back to the Western Balkans. I'm happy that Serbia is joining us. And Prime Minister Anna Brnabic will speak to us. Anna, good to see you. You have the floor. Hello, Ursula. It's great to see you, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the time when we will be able to meet in person again. And um, I'm uh, very, very happy that we are in this united together, united in solidarity against the common enemy, uh, COVID-19. Um, we are thankful for all the support that the European Union has provided to us uh, in this uh, very difficult time, and I'm hoping that all of us are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I hope your family is good. I hope your country is good. I, I wish all the best to the European Commission and your colleagues. And I hope, uh, as all of us in Serbia, that, uh, that uh, all of our economies uh, stay healthy and strong, which is, which is extremely important for the, for the time ahead of us. Um, Serbia is proud to uh, pledge today uh, 2 million euros for the fight, uh, our common fight against uh, coronavirus. Uh, out of these 2 million euros, we are pledging 1 million for the vaccine development that is to support the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation and 1 million euro uh, for the World Health Organization to strengthen healthcare systems around the globe. We are also remaining a committed partner to yourself personally, dear Ursula, as well as to European Commission and all of our um, European Union uh, partners to fight this together through joint funds, but also through joint uh, knowledge, research and development and, and all of the other resources that, that we commonly, I hope, share together uh, today. Uh, for Serbia, it is an honor to participate uh, in this effort. I would like to thank you for organizing this and for bringing all of us uh, uh, together. Please stay strong and may the force be with you.
Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anna. And indeed, I'm looking forward to seeing you again and stay healthy. And now we move to Central Europe. I'm happy to welcome Czechia's Prime Minister, Andrei Babiš, who will speak on behalf of Czechia, Slovakia, Hungary and Poland. Andrei, you have the floor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow citizens uh, of the world, I would like to congratulate the organizers for this opportunity, although I would have much preferred to address you under better circumstances. Yet, unfortunately, the world we live is, uh, in, is fighting a pandemic unknown to living memory. In only several months, uh, the virus has spread from China all across uh, the planet. And unfortunately, the virus knows no borders. It knows no nationalities. It doesn't distinguish between men or women, rich or poor. Uh, I'm grateful for our citizens' uh, acceptance of temporary sacrifices as strict measures such as uh, obligatory wearing fast, uh, face mask to stay home, to keep social distancing and eliminate the spread of the virus were enacted. Europe remains one of the epicenters of the pandemic. Nevertheless, we may be slowly seeing the beginning of the end of this crisis as the reproduction number falls below one in most European countries. We can gradually ease some of the radical lockdown measures over the, and during the months uh, of May. However, let us not forget that Europe has the benefit of universal health care and high standard of living. Other regions of the world don't have this advantage and the development in less fortunate regions such as Russia, South America, Africa is personally troubling. It is therefore important that as the world leaders focus our attention on the people living in these areas. The crisis showed us that we definitely need to spend more money on the health care. We must work more closely together against the common enemy rather than race for the same thing individually. Therefore, I'm glad that I can announce uh, on behalf of the Visegrad group of countries, Poland, Hungary, Slovakia and Czech Republic, a joint pledge of 3 million euro with each V4 country contributing 750,000 euro. This global pledging initiative will help ensure free and equitable access to the result of coronavirus research. Once the vaccine is ready, it must be available to as many people across the globe as possible. During the coming months, we should engage with leading philanthropists to boost this pledge with private contributions. The cost of this undertaking will be enormous, but together we can succeed. Let's continue working together. Stay safe and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andre. And we continue with Poland. Prime Minister Morawiecki will tell us how Poland is supporting our joint efforts in a video message. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, all esteemed participants of this conference. Since the beginning of this pandemic, Poland has been a vocal supporter for a stronger European response to fight both the disease and its direct consequences, as well as counter the impact we all feel in our societies and the economy. That is why I welcome this initiative as a crucial part of this response, and I am happy and proud to be part of it. My own country, as many others in Europe and elsewhere, faces the situation of immense pressure to cope with the pandemic crisis. Nevertheless, it does not weaken our determination to help those in greater need. So far, Poland has provided humanitarian and development aid to many countries worldwide. Our medical teams assisted countries as different as Italy, Kyrgyzstan and the US. We provided medical equipment and supported humanitarian and development programs worth 3.8 million euro in Eastern Partnership countries, reinforcing medical and emergency services there, supporting hospitals and other facilities crucial to fight the pandemic. 
Since last year, we financed close to 7 million euro projects in cooperation with the NGOs, aimed especially to strengthen the healthcare systems and water and sanitation, as well as building the resistance of local communities in countries of Africa, Middle East, and Eastern Partnership. In addition to that, we are also launching a new edition of the Polish Challenge Fund devoted to data and digital identity solutions tackling the pandemic challenges, starting with assistance to Belarus and Ukraine. Poland is also supporting the multilateral mechanism by contributing 1 million Polish zloty to the Central Emergency Relief Fund and another quarter million euro to UNICEF activity in Palestine. We are also in the process of authorizing humanitarian aid projects worth more than 1.5 million euro and providing additional assistance to countries in Western Balkans, Eastern Partnership, Africa and Middle East. Last but not least, right now on Poland and other V4 countries initiative, we discuss rearranging EU Trust Fund for Africa out of 35 million euro, we have proposed to, to, to devote 20 million euro to fight COVID-19 in Libya, one of the most vulnerable countries. We are strongly supporting the Team Europe approach and devoting resources from Horizon Europe to fund research and other efforts aimed to provide universal access for the anti-COVID drugs, tests and vaccine on the basis of affordable price to all countries and people in need. To support it, Poland, together with other V4 partners, has decided to contribute an additional 3 million euro as part of this pledging initiative in order to speed up the process of finding the affordable medicine and vaccine, as well as efficient testing method. I hope that this contribution will be a significant step towards our joint European victory over pandemic and that it will lay ground for future cooperation on similar matters. Thank you, Poland. Thank you for being part of this movement. And now we go to Down Under, to Australia, with a message from Prime Minister Scott Morrison. G'day from Australia. We're very pleased to be part of this important event today and I want to thank the European Commission for bringing us all together for this important purpose. COVID-19 is putting us all to the test and it is a test we are all rising to. This is a great shared project by the peoples of the world with a clear purpose to find that vaccine for COVID-19. A safe vaccine, available to all, affordable to all. In Australia and around the world, our best and brightest medical minds and researchers are working tirelessly in the service of all peoples. Today, Australia is pledging 352 million Australian dollars towards this global effort to fight COVID-19 and to find that vaccine. We're providing 15 million Australian dollars to help develop COVID-19 vaccines and diagnostics to be shared equally between the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, known as CEPI, and the Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics, FIND. As well, here in Australia, we're also providing 337 million Australian dollars to fund COVID-19 research and development work on vaccines, diagnostics, therapeutics and respiratory medicine. Our world-class medical researchers and institutions, the University of Queensland, the Doherty Institute and our CSIRO are already working with CEPI to fast-track a vaccine. Our pledge builds on the 170 million Australian dollars that we contribute every single year to global partners working on the development and deployment of vaccines, drugs and diagnostics. We look forward to continuing our strong support also for Gavi at the pledging conference hosted by Prime Minister Boris Johnson next month. And it's great to look, see you looking so well, Boris. We're also stepping up to assist our region. Our development program is pivoting to focus on COVID-19, especially in our family neighbourhood of the Pacific and Southeast Asia, where we can have the most impact. I know we're all hurting and grieving for what has been lost, and so much has been lost. But out of our grief and sadness comes a strong determination to beat this virus by working together 
and in so doing, ensuring we are better prepared for future pandemics. Thank you so much for the ability to contribute today and be part of this important initiative, and I thank the European Commission again for the opportunity. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Australia. You are far away, but close to our hearts. And from Australia now, we go all the way back to Denmark. Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen will share her message with us on video now. Let me start by saying that my thoughts go to all countries who have lost citizens to this terrible virus. The whole world is affected. Every country is trying to do their best to handle this crisis, and no one knows when this will all be over. Today's conference brings hope that we, in spite of the distance needed, stand united, united in fighting the virus, united in endorsing the concept and spirit of the global accelerator framework. The virus is new, but our response echoes our experience. No country, no company and no organization can win this battle alone. We have to team up, share our knowledge and solutions. And we need a unified strategic approach to research. The past has also taught us that investments in research and innovation will help us prepare for the future. By now, this lesson is now more relevant than ever. Directing financing towards, for example, vaccines to defeat COVID-19 is needed. I'm pleased to announce Denmark's pledge, 50 million euro in support of solutions to this health crisis. Thank you all for organizing this timely event. Let us stand together at a distance and bring back a better future. Thank you. Tusen tak, Mette. Tusen tak, Denmark. And we continue with beautiful Greece. Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis will join us now from Athens. Kyriakos, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to congratulate you uh, on this uh, very, very important uh, uh, initiative. It's an initiative that really brings the world together uh, and joins our forces uh, in the common fight against uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, today is an important day for Greece. Uh, we are gradually beginning um, uh, to ease uh, the very restrictive lockdown measures that we have taken over the past uh, seven weeks. We've been relatively successful uh, in flattening the curve. But we all know uh, that unless we find uh, a vaccine, uh, we will not be uh, completely uh, safe. Uh, and uh, that is why uh, discovering and proving uh, the effectiveness of a vaccine is going to be one of the main challenges that we will face as humanity. But this in itself uh, is not enough. A vaccine should be produced in sufficient quantities in the shortest possible time but it should be available and affordable to the entire global population, starting with the most vulnerable ones, and needs to be distributed worldwide on an equitable basis. And no country or region should have a monopolistic access to the vaccine when it comes to infectious diseases. This was also mentioned by Melinda Gates. The safety of one is the safety of all. Uh, hence, I would subscribe with a call made uh, by also other leaders uh, who have participated in this uh, pledge. Uh, the vaccine, whenever it is found, should be declared a global uh, public good. And I think this is a principle we must agree upon. Uh, and I believe that this is an important message uh, that we all need to send uh, uh, today. Uh, from our part, uh, I am pleased uh, to pledge uh, uh, three uh, million euros to our common effort. Uh, in addition, uh, Greek institutions and private foundations, uh, um, uh, which have already uh, strongly committed to the fight uh, against COVID-19, uh, will also actively contribute um, to this global call. One last point. Um, I wish uh, we can show the same commitment uh, to common action uh, in addressing what is probably the largest challenge of our generation, uh, climate change, uh, which also requires uh, a global response. Thank you very much.
Efraristo Kyriakos, thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution and thank you for your support. And now we stay in Europe and we go to Vienna. And I'm delighted to welcome the Chancellor, Sebastian Kurz. Sebastian, wir freuen uns auf deine Worte. Vielen Dank, liebe Ursula. We are very thankful to you and your team for taking the initiative for this global effort. Currently, the situation in Austria is under control, but we all know that in long term, we will only be able to win the fight against coronavirus and help our economies recover if we work together to develop a vaccine and a cure. I'm therefore pleased to announce contributions by Austria of 31 million euros, and we will support SEPI with 2 million euros. Furthermore, we support the work of WHO with around 3 million in their programs to fight coronavirus in Africa, the Middle East, and particularly in Syria. In addition to that, international cooperation, we are investing around 26 million euros at national level for research activities to fight the coronavirus. Thank you, Ursula, for your um, for your work and also um, for this global effort. Servus, Sebastian, und vielen, vielen Dank an Österreich. And now we have a message from Prime Minister Robert Abela from the beautiful island of Malta. The COVID-19 pandemic is the biggest global public health challenge of our generation. Many lives were lost on all continents, and drastic measures were taken to contain the spread of the virus. It affected the daily lives of most of the global population. Nationally, we took strong containment decisions to save human life. Despite the high number of deaths worldwide, one may still consider these measures a success, since many more lives were and are being saved. The other side of the coin of these containment measures is the impact on our respective economies and globally. Many jobs were lost, affecting the livelihood of many of our respective citizens. The lives of many people drastically changed, some of whom have been brought to the brink of poverty. These hardships, together with the confinement, also have an effect on mental health, the extent of which is yet to be determined. And although many of us are now relaxing our national containment measures, life will be considered far from normal, and it is very unlikely that we can have a swift economic recovery until we find a vaccine. The elderly and the most vulnerable will be mostly affected. The global management of the virus is of utmost importance, and those countries with a weaker health system require our support. Since the virus has proved to be very infectious and clearly without borders, all countries need to have access to clinically proven therapeutics and testing material. Testing has proven to be an essential tool. Therefore, it is important that it is globally available and that there is adequate financing in this regard. Secondly, every day which passes without a vaccine will result in undesired consequences to human life and the economy. The global economic slowdown is increasing global poverty and famine. The economic slowdown could result in a significant death toll, far beyond of those dying with the virus itself. We have a collective responsibility to avert this as much as possible. It is essential that we start building the capacity for the swift production of the vaccine, as soon as the safety and the efficacy of a developed product is scientifically proven. This fast and large-scale production is essential in order to avoid the repetition of the chaos we are all currently facing to purchase protective equipment, ventilators and some essential medicines. Swift and equitable global deployment of these vaccines is also essential. We must ensure that no country is left behind, irrespective of its wealth. We therefore need to have strategies, together with the World Health Organization and international organizations, to ensure that the vaccine reaches all. This includes the poor, 
marginalized and those in war-stricken areas. To this effect, my government is today pledging 400,000 euro towards identified needs and partnerships. Thank you so much, Malta. And now from just across the town here in Brussels, I'm delighted to welcome for Belgium Prime Minister Sophie Wilmes with her message. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends around the world, Belgium will allocate a total of 27 million euros to the immediate global response to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Of these funds, 5 million euro will be allocated to the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovation with a clear focus on vaccine research. Another 22 million euro will be allocated to the Global Humanitarian Response Plan of the WHO and of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, both for vaccine research and the stabilization of infection hotspots around the globe. This effort signals Belgium's strong and lasting support to international solidarity and multilateralism. We need to ensure bold action to alleviate the, Im the immediate impact of the pandemic and to pull all of our resources in an efficient manner to develop, test and distribute a COVID-19 vaccination as soon as possible. The ultimate aim is to have a vaccine that is affordable and accessible to everyone on the basis of very sound multilateral principle, all for one, one for all. We all stress the need for paying particular attention to fragile situation in line with the leave no one behind principle anchored in the substantial development goals. Belgium is a long lasting host for many global pharmaceutical companies. We also have a fine tradition of high quality public and private research. And that is why we emphasize the need to guarantee the quality of pharmaceutical product used. To meet this historic challenge, Belgium calls on a close coordination of our common efforts with those of the private sector. This is the only way to move collectively forward and defeat the virus once and for all. Thank you. Merci et thank you, Belgique. Remember that every single euro, every single dollar that we raise today will go straight to the best scientists and researchers. And whatever breakthrough we will have, it will be produced by the world for the whole world. It will be accessible and it will be affordable to all. And now I have the pleasure to introduce Jeremy Farrar for the Wellcome Trust. He will also speak on behalf of the Therapeutics Accelerator. Jeremy, it's so good to have you here. You have the floor. President uh, Ursula von der Leyen, thank you very much and, and thank you for your leadership and uh, that of your fantastic team in bringing us together. I'm delighted to speak today on behalf of the Wellcome Trust. Wellcome, as an independent charity to support research to improve human health everywhere in the world, is very proud to partner in this bold and much needed initiative. We're clear that COVID-19 needs collaboration and a leadership on a global scale between international institutions, governments, and supported by the private sector and philanthropy. COVID-19 has brought into the spotlight global leadership, and it's a privilege to share a platform with so many of you today. Thank you for your leadership and for your vision. For as long as COVID-19 is out of control anywhere, it's out of control everywhere, and it's a threat to all of us. The focus until now, of course, has been on the immediate response, and that has brought us time. But let us all be clear that this is now an endemic human infection. It is not going away. This is not SARS. We have to assume and plan for rebounds and for second waves. The world cannot go through repeated lockdowns. The world is losing some $200 billion a week to this global crisis. Science and the sharing of that science is the only true and equitable exit from this pandemic. And this summit is a crucial step towards our shared future. And our future needs that investment now. 
today has a clear purpose, the development of three tools, diagnostics, treatments and vaccines. And we will need all three. We cannot guarantee to have treatments. We cannot guarantee to have vaccines. We have to be able to develop both. I'm very proud to announce today that alongside our initial investment of $100 million in CEPI, Wellcome will commit an additional $50 million to the Therapeutics Accelerator alongside the Gates Foundation and MasterCard and an additional $26 million for the support of essential research and capacity in low- and middle-income countries. That is in addition to the $1.3 billion we fund in research for human health every year. The Therapeutics Accelerator will urgently work 24-7 to develop treatments that will help prevent and treat people with COVID-19, and they will save lives. Ensuring treatments, vaccines and diagnostics are made and made available to everybody in the world who needs them on an equitable basis, independent of their ability to pay, is crucial. That's why the Therapeutics Accelerator, alongside our partners at UNITAID, will be a co-convener of the ACT Accelerator, a global collaboration for diagnostics, treatments and vaccines. This has to lead to faster, equitable access to all the tools we need to turn what is a global crisis into a manageable condition. Hope, solidarity, multilateralism and a shared equitable endeavour is the only way forward. And it also speaks volumes to the sort of world we choose to live in in the future, in the 21st century. Today is the start of those choices and Welcome is honoured to be part of this global enterprise. Thank you to everybody involved, particularly to our host, President von der Leyen and the European Commission to help us bring together let us make sure that the 4th of May 2020 is the start of a new era and a day we will all remember with pride. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. It's so good to have you on board. And we continue with the government representatives. Now for Latvia, Edgar Zrinkevic, Minister of Foreign Affairs, is speaking to us. Good afternoon from Latvia. This is a very special day for my nation as we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the restoration of independence. And Latvia is very proud to join the coronavirus global response and to pledge 100,000 euros to the United Nations and to WHO efforts to tackle this disease. Additionally, the Latvian government has decided to allocate 5 million euros to boost national scientific efforts to tackle coronavirus issues, to work out and to assist in working out the vaccine. Also, we are working to develop digital solutions of tracking those who have been infected or those who have been in contact with the people. Those are efforts that we are doing on national level, but we also believe that only through multilateral efforts, only through joint efforts, we can beat this disease. So to that end, I would like to thank the European Commission for organizing this pledging conference and also those nations who are participating in it and pledging its support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Latvia. And we keep on going again to Asia. For South Korea, we have a message from Foreign Minister Kang kyo -wa. Madam Chair, Excellencies, effective testing, contact tracing and patient treatment are key to containing the fast spreading COVID-19, but victory against this virus cannot be declared before effective vaccines and therapeutics are developed and made available to all in need around the world. The funds required to reach this goal are enormous, and I thank the EU and the co-leads for undertaking this initiative. We must all do our very best to stretch our financial resources to contribute to this drive. Korea started developing testing kits from the very early stage. And with sufficient domestic production capacity, we can now provide support for other countries in need of them. And as one of the first countries to be hit by COVID-19, we are now sharing our experience and know-how in fighting as well as living with COVID-19 through video conferences, webinars and written materials, the requests for which continue to stream in. 
My government has also strengthened the policy coordination and financial support for the development of vaccines and therapeutics by medical and biological labs, many of which, including the International Vaccine Institute, are part of global research networks. The Korean government has been contributing around 50 million U.S. dollars annually to the key actors of the ACT partnerships, and we will significantly increase financial resources for bilateral and multilateral assistance, and will make additional contributions of 50 million U.S. dollars to the partnerships, including at Gavi's next replenishment. I'm also happy to announce that Korea will start to provide financial contributions to CEPI, and we will also explore further ways to enhance cooperation with the partnerships. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, South Korea. We are now heading across to Mexico. It's a pleasure to introduce the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Marcelo Ebrard Casobon. Excellency, you have the floor. Muchas gracias. Quiero felicitar en primer lugar esta iniciativa. Eh, decirles que, como ustedes saben, en América, México incluido, por supuesto, estamos ahora por entrar al pico de la pandemia, lo que vivieron ustedes en Europa hace poco tiempo. Hemos aprendido muchas lecciones. Coincidimos plenamente con eh, lo que se está proponiendo, con esta res respuesta global. México hace poco promovió en Naciones Unidas y les quiero agradecer a todas y a todos su apoyo eh, una resolución para asegurar el acceso de todas y todos a medicamentos, equipos y vacunas porque es la manera en que tenemos que hacer frente a la pandemia la pandemia solo puede combatirse con una respuesta multilateral muy vigorosa como la que se está ahora organizando quiero también comentarles que he estado en conversación con los uh, colegas de América Latina y el Caribe. México ahora tiene la presencia pro tempore de la comunidad de estados latinoamericanos en el Caribe y me eh, han solicitado expresarles que toda la región desea participar de la mejor manera posible en esta iniciativa. Vamos a reunir recursos, esfuerzos para poder dar un respaldo regional decisivo en favor de esta iniciativa. Muchas gracias por la, el espacio que nos da el día de hoy. Decirles que coincidimos plenamente con lo que ustedes tratan de hacer. México, todas sus instituciones de investigación, igual que muchas de América Latina y el Caribe, junto con las que de, tienen los países que están participando, pues aportaremos recursos y conocimientos para que podamos salir adelante todos juntos. Muchas gracias. Muy buen día. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Mexico. And thank you for this message from Latin America. Now we proceed to the Gulf. The Gulf and the Middle East are strong partners in this endeavor. Let us continue with Kuwait. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Ahmed Nasser al Mohammad al Sabah, is joining us. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Mrs. Ursula von der Leyen, President. It is my honor to represent His Highness Sheikh Sabah al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, the Emir of the State of Kuwait, who wishes you the best in all endeavors, especially in combating coronavirus. I would like to express my country's appreciation to His Excellency, to Her Excellency, the President of the European Commission, for her great efforts in putting together this, this global conference to accelerate the development, production, and equitable access to the new COVID 19 diagnostic therapeutics and vaccines. Looking at all the high-ranking participants in this event has made two things clear. The EU maintains an important role and a high level of status and global respect. Secondly, the importance of collective efforts in combating the coronavirus pandemic. The state of Kuwait reaffirms its long-term commitment to the principles of international cooperation and the international order based on the rules and regulations stipulated in the Charter of the United Nations, especially in these times of crisis. I must, I must urge you all, despite the battle raging against coronavirus, we must not forget our effort to support the people of the world. There, there are still the issues of refugees, migrant poverty, famine, and the spread of other diseases. This is confirmation that the international community 
must stick together and greatly expand multilateral cooperation in order to survive these global challenges. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, WHO plays a decisive role in containing the spread of the virus, and the state of Kuwait will continue to provide all kinds of support to this very important organization. The WHO has provided advice, assistance, guidance, recommendations, and support to countries with weak health systems and how best to respond to the virus. They have offered strategic support and resources in order to help unprepared countries develop their own national health plans. Since the outbreak of the coronavirus, the state of Kuwait has donated 60 million U.S. dollars to support the efforts of WHO to respond to the coronavirus threat to uh, threat in vulnerable countries. To this end, I would like to announce Kuwait's pledge in, th in this event endeavor to support this conf conference, as well as future international efforts combating COVID-19 pandemic of 40 million U.S. dollars. Thus, Kuwait's total donation to support global efforts in this battle amounts to a total of 100 million U.S. dollars. Again, I thank the EU and all our co-hosts for organizing such an important event. Once again, I would like to reiterate Kuwait's readiness to closely cooperate in the fight against this virus. Thank you all. Shukran, Excellency Shukran. From Kuwait City, we now head to Slovenia. We have a video message from Foreign Minister Andrzej Logar. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 has been a test unlike any we have faced before. It has taught us how to temporarily restrict free movement, suspend economic activity, and isolate ourselves from our neighbors and our friends. But this isolation has also taught us how much we value human connection, that we cannot defeat this threat to public health unless we act in unison. We have been compelled to step apart to prevent the spread of this disease. Slovenia has acted decisively and has thankfully succeeded in flattering the curve of the spread of COVID-19. We are now cautiously easing the restrictions that were necessary to protect our people. The fight against the coronavirus is far from over. We must prevent a recurrence that would once again draw our economy and our lives in standstill. In addition, we must all work together to find more permanent solutions, better diagnostics, treatments, and a safe and effective vaccine. More than ever, we need solidarity, leadership, and common action. I therefore welcome this effort to draw together all global endeavors for the accelerated development and deployment of effective diagnostics, safe treatment, and vac vaccines, and to make them available to anyone who needs them. Slovenia will contribute to this undertaking by earmarking 13,760,000 euros and government funding for research and development and health sector investments for COVID-19. I would also like to highlight another lesson of this corona crisis. It has shown us that robust, resilient, and accessible health systems are crucial for normal functioning of our society. Once the worst of this health crisis is over, we must do better in preparing for the next one. Let me conclude by paying tribute to health workers everywhere who have been working tirelessly and selflessly for the benefit of humankind. May we soon prevail over this disease. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you, Slovenia. And now we move on to Lithuania. Uh, the Health Minister of uh, Lithuania, Aurelius Veriga, has a message for us. Lithuania is grateful to the President von der Leyen for her initiative to call states, private donors and all the people of goodwill to raise funds for the development of the vaccine against various COVID-19. We in Lithuania have successfully contained the first wave of pandemic, but we cannot live in a fear of second wave or waves. We need a vaccine. We need a long-term solution. We need it to our elderly people, and we need it for our young next generation. We need it for our citizens and 
for all the people in all continents. We need it for our civilization. Only collective actions, only collective funded research will mobilize our global scientific potential. No doubt we are stronger together. Let's do it. Lithuania, with its creative scientific potential, is ready to join the scientific efforts. Achu, Lithuania. And now we move from Lithuania to Oman. The Minister of Health of Oman, Dr. Ahmed Al Saidi, sends us a video. Here we go. On behalf of His Majesty, Sultan Haytham bin Tariq, the Sultan of Oman, I would like to, uh, to thank Her Excellency Dr. Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, for inviting us to this important Coronavirus Global Response Summit. We very much appreciate the proposed global collaboration to accelerate the development, production, and equitable access to new COVID-19 diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines that was launched on Friday, May the 1st. We firmly believe that collective and cooperative action between states is a key found foundation in dealing effectively with the threat against health, life, and livelihood posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, bringing grave social and economic challenges all over the world. We welcome and applaud all efforts by the World Health Organization, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the G20, GAFI, and others. Current conditions in Oman, we manage to slow the progression of the disease thanks to the measured steps taken by the government and supported by the public. Since we had our first case on the 24th of February 2020, we've had so far only 2,568 cases, 12 deaths, 750 have recovered completely. Our great thanks and gratitude to our frontline staff from the healthcare professional and their colleagues from other sectors. We are fully committed to working closely with every nation to advance common thinking and collaboration among the international community, all for the benefit of the future generation and ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Shukran, to Oman. And now we move to the Carpathians, to Romania. We have a video message from the Health Minister, Nelu Tataru. Dear President Ursula von der Leyen, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly pleased to be a part of these events and to share Romanian support for a global coordinated approach in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. I want to congratulate President Ursula von der Leyen for the initiative to evolve in the EU to global fight against this threat. This worldwide pandemic is a challenge for the making, bringing significant change in our way of life. The world of our citizen has been and their economic connection have been disrupted, social ties have been affected and our policy priority have been adapted. The force of this pandemic has relevant us an important lesson. Coordination and solidarity among us is essential. There is no other option of our the crisis in the medium and longer term. Then standing united, working together and supporting us as much as we can with medical experts. We have a moral responsibility to make all efforts to ensure that both and vaccine and an antidote to this virus we found and that any future obstruct could be prevented. Research is key in order to develop adequate treatments and vaccine. But coordination of paramount importance we have want to achieve commonly. Benefits and long lasting results. In this sense, we strongly welcome setting up and dedicate platform for partnership and cooperation between multiple staying and organization to have provided medical expertise.
We have to make sure the access to innovative medicine, treatments and vaccine are available and accessible to everyone. No country, no citizen has to think or feel that in alone in such crisis situation. Romania fully understands the importance of this principle and value and I pleased to announce that we join the initiative. Our financial contribution is a month of 200,000 euro. Mm -hmm. We stand together. Thank you. Thank you, Romania. Thank you, Excellency. And now we are going back to the northern part of Europe. We are joined from Finland by the Minister of Social Affairs and Health, Aino Kaisa Pekonen. Excellency, it's good to see you. You have the floor. Thank you, President von der Leyen, for leading this important initiative. Your Excellencies, our lives have changed drastically during the past couple of months. In order to certain this pandemic, we must find solutions through post-paced partnership to deliver sustainable capacity building for health security, preparedness and strengthening of primary health care. Finland is actively taking part in the global efforts to fight the effects of the pandemic. In total, our immediate support is around 36 million euros. This includes 6.5 million euros in support of WHO. In addition to the 3.6 million euro pledge to IFRC and UNHCR. Finland pledged 10 million euros for extra humanitarian assistance in response to COVID-19 appeals to the dispersed in 2020. Finland is also supporting NGOs with 3 million euros in global COVID response. Finland fully supports in acceleration of the research, development and production of the necessary vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics. Finland is today making a commitment to support Gavi's work in deli de delivering vaccines to priority countries with 2.5 million euros. Finland has joined CEPI with a 4 million euro commitment to pandemic vaccine development, and we have made a 1 million euro pledge to the International Vaccine Institute. Nationally, we are supporting with 6 million euros a broad-based uh, research consortium on epidemic research, including the development of rapid diagnostic. Our National Institute for Health and Welfare is committed to giving open access to the result. Ladies and gentlemen, my main message today is this. We must commit to treating COVID-19 vaccine as global common goods for health. We must guarantee equitable access, availability and affordability of the vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics developed for COVID-19, regardless of where they have been developed or who has funded them. Thank you. Kitos, Excellency, Kitos, Finland. And now we move from Helsinki to the Gulf again, that is to the United Arab Emirates. We will now listen to Mrs. Reem Al-Hashimi, the State Minister responsible for international cooperation. Excellency, it's good to have you here. You have the floor. Thank you very much. It is indeed an honor for the United Arab Emirates to be invited to join this esteemed gathering and contribute directly to its noble objectives. We appreciate very much President Ursula von der Leyen's initiative in coordinating our joint efforts. The United Arab Emirates fully subscribes to the principles of equitable global access to anti-COVID-19 tools, to multilateralism in the pursuit 
to have shared solutions and to the 2030 Agenda and its stated mission that no one should be left behind. The UAE is already an urgent, dedicated and responsible actor in the fight against COVID and we will continue to work tires, tirelessly at the forefront of the global response to this malicious and relentless threat. As I write, the UAE is sending two COVID-19 field hospitals from Norway to our brothers and sisters in Ghana and in Ethiopia. We've airlifted more than 472 tons of medical aid, PPE gear and supplies to 43 countries around the world, mainly in Africa. Thus far, 110 million US dollars has been allocated and dispatched. For as long as we are able, we will continue this work in cooperation with global health and development organizations, sending tens of thousands of testing kits, as well as much other much needed equipment to countries and organizations across the globe so that they are better equipped to halt the spread of COVID-19. At home, we continue to protect our UAE community, which hails from all the continents of the world through extensive testing and contact tracing programs. We're also mobilizing our medical community to develop novel treatments and diagnostics for COVID-19 with around 60 significant studies underway. Among these is the recently announced break breakthrough at Abu Dhabi Stem Cell Center, which has received a patent for an innovative and promising new treatment for COVID patients. You will find us always a proactive, adaptable and dependable partner. We stand in unwavering support and solidarity with the global community and will continue to support international efforts to defeat COVID. By working together, we will overcome this malicious threat. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Shukran, Excellency, and more countries are willing to contribute. We continue with China. The Chinese ambassador to the European Union, Sang Ming, will join us. Excellency, you have the floor. Thank 国际社会坚定信心，团结应对，全面加强国际合作，同与会领导人作出同舟共济，携手应对疫情的郑重承诺。为全球抗击疫情的努力注入新动力。日前，李克强总理同芬兰主席通电话时表示，中方赞赏
开设向所有国家开放的呃疫情防控网上支持中心，同一百六十多个国家和国际组织召开了一百二十多场视频交流会议，向十七个国家派出了十九支抗疫医疗专家组。为加强抗疫国际合作，争取早日战胜疫情，中方将采取进一步措施，包括是需要进一步扩大抗疫合作专项资金规模。考虑向联合国全球人道应对计划提供捐助，中方将积极参与世卫组织等联合发起的全球合作，加速开发，呃，生产公平获取新冠疫情防控新工具倡议，加强同 c e p i Gavi 等国际机构在药物、疫苗、检测等方面的科研合作。发展中国家不应成为应对疫情的洼地，发广大发展中国家公共卫生体系薄弱，抗疫任务艰巨。作为发展中国家一员，中国对他们面临的挑战感同身受。以根据疫情发展和部部分国家的需要和愿望，帮助这些国家强化。公共卫生体系提高应对能力。下一步，中方还将暂缓七十七个发展中国家今年五月一日至年底到期的债务本息偿付，帮助这些国家减轻经济压力。中方呼吁国际社会携手为广大发展中国家提供支持。我们愿加强在这一领域的三方和多方合作。在抗疫过程中，信心团结比金子还重要。恐慌推诿比病毒还可怕，相信只要国际社会同心协力共克时间，我们一定能取得国际抗疫斗争的全面胜利。谢谢。Thank you, Excellency. This concludes the formal pledging round by governments for now, and we proceed to our partners, who all have a crucial role to play. I now have the pleasure to welcome the World Economic Forum. It is the cradle of some of our prominent organizations that are here with us today. It is the place, for example, where SEPI was founded, and it is a main link to the private sector. With us is Professor Klaus Schwab on video. Madam President von der Leyen, Excellencies. Honored participants, the World Economic Forum, as the international institution for public-private cooperation, is putting its full weight behind this crucial initiative. The purpose of the World Economic Forum is to mobilize business and to make sure that business, together with the other stakeholders of global society, Governments, international organizations, civil society, and science addresses the big issues of our times. We have taken the initiative immediately after the appearance of this pandemic to create a COVID-19 action platform. More than 1,000 companies are engaged, and over 30 projects have been. Put into practice, we feel that business can make a very special contribution. Not just pharmaceutical companies and other companies directly related to this pandemic, but every business is challenged today to contribute with its know-how and with its resources to the solution of this challenge of this problem. Which is of utmost significance for the future of humankind. We are particularly committed to this initiative since the forum has been at the origin in its annual meeting in Davos of the Global Fund, Gavi and Sepi, together with the Gates Foundation and other founders of those crucial organizations, particularly today. Madam President, Excellencies, we would like to assure you that business, as far as the forum can mobilize it, is behind this initiative, and we will support you in any way we can. Thank you, Klaus, and thank you to the World Economic Forum. 
Now for the European Investment Bank. I have the pleasure to welcome the President Werner Hoyer with his message. Let me thank President Ursula von der Leyen, President Charles Michel, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and WHO Director General Dr. Tedros for convening this conference. The EIB has been fully mobilized in the European efforts to minimize the devastating impact of this pandemic, providing financing for the economy, health systems, and R&D efforts at global level. For the health and life science sectors, the EIB has built with partners a pipeline of projects around 6 billion euros of financing, with a significant global focus on health preparedness and diagnostics. Of particular note, we recently approved a 180 million guarantee facility for Gavi to ensure access to vaccines for the poorest. EIB has teamed up with the European Commission to build and finance a pipeline of over 20 European innovative companies with promising projects against COVID-19 for a total potential financing volume of around 770 million euro. In the coming days, we will examine the four pillars identified under this project effort in detail and get back to you with concrete projects and figures. Under pillar one, I can already pledge an indicative amount of 141 million euro from EIB's own resources for COVID-19 vaccine development. We shall look at diagnostics, therapeutics, and our global support to health systems in the coming days, including our close cooperation with WHO, and return to you with a comprehensive figure. The EIB Group stands ready to play an important role. Last Friday, EIB and WHO signed a memorandum of understanding to, to enhance cooperation even further, starting with health projects in vulnerable countries. With the support of the EU Commission and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the EU Bank has launched the African Health Diagnostics Platform to improve diagnostic services for low-income populations. And we're also in contact with Wellcome Trust about a potential collaboration for the COVID-19 accelerator. We can do more. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank, Werner Heuer, and thank you very much to the European Investment Bank. And now we move on to the World Bank. Uh, we are joined by Annette Dixon, Vice President for Human Development. Uh, thank you for being with us. You have the floor now. Thank you. It's an honor to be joining you here today on behalf of the World Bank Group. We would like to thank all of the leaders and partners here for your commitment to delivering the therapeutics and vaccines that are so urgently needed for the world to overcome this pandemic. The World Bank is proud to be working closely with partners as part of this international alliance to fight COVID-19. Fair and equitable access to vaccines for the poorest and most vulnerable countries is essential to altering the course of this devastating pandemic. The World Bank is currently delivering the largest and fastest emergency response operations in our entire history, supporting development com developing countries in every region of the world to manage the impacts of COVID-19. Through our financial, technical and advisory support, we're helping developing countries to strengthen their pandemic response and healthcare systems which is vital for the effective distribution and delivery of vaccines. Vaccines, diagnostics, and therapeutics are also central, uh, a central pillar of this support. Complementing the pledges announced here today, and as previously announced, over the next 15 months, the World Bank Group will be providing up to $160 billion in financing to support developing countries with the health, economic, and social impacts of COVID-19, including $50 billion in grants and highly concessional terms through IDA, our fund for the poorest countries. Together, we must ensure that the poorest countries are not left behind and that any vaccines uh, that are available are widely accessible, especially for the most vulnerable. Thank you.
Thank you, Annette, and uh, thanks very much to all of you. It is so good to see that financial institutions are participating, and this is the moment to announce that the European Commission is making available an additional 400 million euros in guarantees for loans. And together with the European Investment Bank and 1 billion euro in loans provided by France, that adds up to 1 billion 54, 1 billion 54 000, million euros in loans, a long figure. So 1.54 billion euros, we had it, in loan finance for the fight against COVID-19. And now allow me to introduce for the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI, Chief Executive Officer Richard Hatchett. Mr. Hatchett, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, your distinguished excellencies, colleagues, and friends. I want to express my sincere gratitude to all who have joined together today to express their solidarity and commitment to fighting the global threat of COVID-19 and for all the many generous pledges to support CEPI's work to develop vaccines. It is only through this spirit of collaboration and through science that we can build an exit strategy from the pandemic. But we must be clear-eyed about the challenges that we face. These challenges are global, they are urgent, and they are unrivaled in their complexity. As many have said, we must remember that as we undertake this struggle, that so long as COVID-19 circulates anywhere, everywhere is at risk. No nation can end the pandemic by itself. No single company will provide all of the solutions. No one today can know who will develop the most effective vaccines or where they will be manufactured. But all of us will benefit from their fair allocation of whatever vaccines and tools can be developed. We stand with all of you with WHO, with our sister organization, Gavi, and with all of the organizations joined together in this effort in believing that everyone should have access to the diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines that human ingenuity and joint effort can create. We must work together. The work will not be easy. It will not be cheap, and we cannot be assured of success. But today's pledges of solidarity and commitment give us hope. By combining our skills, expertise, and resources, we will find a way to end this pandemic together. Now is the time for concerted, coordinated action. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatchett, and uh, many, many thanks to the outstanding work of, work of CEPI. And indeed, it is truly amazing how many resources we are mobilizing. This will really make the difference, and I'm pleased to have with us for Gavi, the Vaccines Alliance, Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Seth Berkeley. Dr. Berkeley, it's good to have you with us. You have the floor. Thank you, President Van der Leyen, for your great leadership in convening this important event with your co-host and these extraordinary leaders to galvanize these global commitments to tackle the coronavirus pandemic. In this moment, it's absolutely vital that we all join together at the political, scientific, and community levels to end this pandemic and the suffering it's causing globally. Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, has worked for the last 20 years to assure equity in vaccination. We currently help countries vaccinate more than half of the world's children and prevent the spread of outbreaks across the world. As we've heard from others, it's clear that if we want to end this pandemic, minimize the loss of life and return to some semblance of normality, we need vaccines. I must say I'm incredibly grateful to our existing and new donors who today and in the last few weeks have announced their pledges for Gavi for our next period, as well as supplemental support for this important work on COVID-19 vaccines, which we will be doing jointly with CEPI. Building upon our experience in accelerating the availability of billions of doses of vaccines and the introduction of close to 500 new vaccines in some of the poorest, most difficult to operate countries, Gavi is now proposing to create a new COVID-19 advanced market commitment. 
We're working closely with CEPI, the World Bank, and other partners to do this. This will allow scaled up manufacturing and speed up availability of vaccines by efficiently managing the supply and demand of vaccines with supporting incentives for industry and providing financial capabilities. Gavi's innovative financing instruments, IFM, will also be used to finance vaccine development by partners, including CEPI and for the AMC. This is essential for in addition to the enormous task of developing COVID vaccines, we must, as have others have said, ensure that there are enough vaccines for global deployment, guaranteed equitable access, protecting healthcare workers and bolstering health systems, and in the meantime, ensure that routine immunization continues during the pandemic so that we don't face multiple outbreaks of infectious diseases. All of this makes Gavi's work more than ever. And as Prime Minister Johnson mentioned, on the 4th of June, he will be hosting Gavi's virtual global vaccine summit to complete financing of Gavi's core activities and our work on the additional activities we're doing on COVID vaccines. We must address the crisis now and ensure the right systems are in place long term to prevent infectious diseases, protect the next generation, and ensure that communities can prosper. I thank you for helping with both. Thank you, Dr. Berkeley. Thank you for everything that you do. And we count on you and we count, of course, on Gavi. And now for the Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics, or FIND, Chief Executor, Executive Officer Catherine Böhme will speak to us. Mrs. Böhm, you have the floor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the diagnostics community, FIND congratulates the European Commission on hosting this landmark event. Testing is the first line of defense against COVID-19. It saves lives. It allows economies to reopen and stay open. And it is actionable today. Countries that have really been able to test have already cut transmission. In the future, testing will also be vital for the introduction of vaccines and therapeutics. But too many are still struggling to access the right tests, and these inequalities will have tragic consequences. We need tests that are simple, affordable, available to everyone. Find the Foundation for Innovative New Diagnostics together with the Global Fund is leading the diagnostics pillar of the ACT Accelerator to harness innovation and accelerate access. With WHO, public and private sector partners, we're expediting development of high quality rapid tests manufactured at high volumes and rolled out at high speed so that we can test, test, and test. This is urgent for COVID-19 and essential for preventing future pandemics. Every dollar invested in testing today is a dollar invested in our future glo global health security. The global need for diagnostics will be at least $6 billion, of which $2 billion is needed for the ACT Accelerator Diagnostics Pillar for work that can save millions of lives right now. We cannot allow testing inequalities to jeopardize our global pandemic response. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Böhme. This initiative will empower the organizations that do the work on the ground. And together, we're showing what the world can do. For Unitaid, I have the pleasure to welcome the executive board chair, Mrs. Marisol Turenne. Mrs. Turenne, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Excellencies, let me first thank you, Madam President, for uh, your leadership in organizing this conference. And I want to thank those who already announced additional contribution. First, I want to recall that the global threat of COVID-19 requires, of course, a global response because it strikes everyone everywhere at almost the same time. The unique partnership we launched with our key partners, now known as the ACT, is the best collective and coordinated response we could hope. To combat the virus, we certainly need vaccines. But before they become available, we need new tools 
new treatments and better diagnostics to curb the trend of contaminations and deaths now. Second, UNITED is the official co-convener of the Therapeutics Partnership and an active partner of diagnostics and health system strengthening pillars. Resources to UNITED will serve to ensure that medicines and diagnostics are adapted to everyone, everywhere, in both the North and South. We will focus on unblocking market barriers to the products. Finally, we also need to ensure equitable access to these new tools and make sure all those who need them can access them. In that regard, we should learn from the positive experience of UNITED and the Medicines Patent Pool in making HIV treatments available to most of those who need them and support the implementation of a global voluntary pooling mechanism for COVID-19 related technologies as proposed by WHO and the President of Costa Rica. UNITED, thank you for your support to win this new fight everywhere as we together succeeded in the past against other diseases. Thank you, thank you, UNITED, thank you, Marisol Turen. And now let's move on to the industry. It is remarkable what industry has done in this global effort. And we count a lot on you, the industry, to manufacture at scale and at speed never seen before. For the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers and Associations, the chairman, Dave Ricks, sends us his message. Hello, my name is Dave Ricks, and as chairman of the IFPMA, the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers, and chairman and CEO of Eli Lilly, I'm pleased to join you today at this very important event. Of course, the impact of COVID-19 on our daily lives and our livelihoods is all too real, and never have the stakes been higher. But never before has the pharmaceutical industry moved as quickly and decisively to channel our innovation and mobilize our know-how as now during the response to this pandemic. We are driven by a deep sense of responsibility towards the patients and society as a whole. Whether for vaccines or treatments, our companies are diverting considerable resources and brought together our best people to accelerate the development of new treatments and vaccines to contain and extinguish COVID-19. We're collaborating widely to ensure that our expertise is shared across the scientific community as part of the global fight against this devastating illness. To ensure nobody is left behind in facing this pandemic, industry is committed to working with governments and partners to make sure that these treatments are available and affordable for all the patients that need them, wherever or whomever they may be. Our role as a founding partner of the Access to COVID-19 Tools Act Accelerator or the Act Partnership is important given our unique position to find and scale up solutions to prevent and stop COVID-19. But the development of vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics is not enough. More than ever, we need to international cooperation to ensure that no one is left behind in the race to end COVID-19. This cooperation requires coordinated, multi-stakeholder action that includes the private sector as an essential partner. IFPMA members are fully committed to succeed in this extraordinary mission together. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. And now we move to the Developing Countries Vaccine Manufacturers Network. Live from India, the President, Mr. Sai Prasad, is with us. Mr. Prasad, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President, Your Excellencies, global leaders. I'm honored to represent my constituency today to reiterate our commitment to global public health and to support the fight against COVID-19. The Developing Country Vaccine Manufacturers Network were a public health-driven alliance of vaccine manufacturers from emerging countries. We're firmly engaged in vaccines research, development, manufacturing, and distribution in local and for international use. SARS-CoV-2, the virus 
causing COVID-19 is like no other virus we have seen before. It transcends continents and countries, class and creed. Simply put, it's gone viral. Our response to this pandemic should also be robust. We urge global leaders to commit resources that would enable vaccines community to adopt a strategy which considers the 100 odd vaccine candidates that are under development, enable technology transfer of lead candidates to global distributed vaccine manufacturing sites that are available. The DCVMN is a network of more than 40 global manufacturers around the world. We are exceptionally well placed to uh, develop solutions for COVID-19. Firstly, COVID-19, many of our members are developing vaccine candidates. Second, our members manufacture, supply, and distribute more than 3 billion doses of vaccines every year. And thirdly, our memberships have access to local distribution channels in more than 170 countries worldwide, which are actively transcending borders for immunization every day. Lastly, I'll leave you with these simple thoughts. Global product, local manufacturing, and leave no one behind. Thank you and namaste. Thank you and namaste, Mr. Prasad. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it. Today is a defining moment for the global community. At a time when we are sitting further apart than usual, the world has shown it is standing closer together than ever before. And in the space of just a few hours, we have collectively pledged 7.4 billion euros for vaccines, diagnostics and treatments. And all this money will help kickstart unprecedented global cooperation. And it will create a truly unique global public good. This is the true power of unity and of humanity. And I thank governments from across the world for contributing with funding and commitment. And I'm so grateful to the global health organizations, the researchers, the scientists, and all the partners who will work tirelessly to find the solutions we need. It would not have been possible without you, your leadership, and your compassion. But more, much more, will be needed in the months to come. Today's sprint was a great start for our marathon. The marathon is the way ahead now. We need everyone on, on board. I just got the message that Madonna has announced a contribution of $1 million to the coronavirus global response, and that shows that the global response must also include social society, civil society, and the global community of citizens. And for this reason, we are joining forces with NGOs. We will work with global citizen and other partners, so stay tuned. I thank you all. And today we can truly say the world is united against the coronavirus and the world will win.